and with the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 26th of March, 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and a visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. The Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Garden peoples of the Adelaide Plains and pay respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also acknowledge that respect, extend that respect to other Aboriginal language group and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Um, so, welcome. Lovely to see so many people with us here tonight. Um, I will start item five, which is apologies. Uh, Councillor Dr Donovan has uh, is an apology tonight. Um, I would also like to mention that it's Councillor Sims' birthday. Happy birthday, Councillor Sims. Um, item six is a confirmation of minutes. Uh, if I could have someone to confirm minutes from the 12th of March and also the 18th of March. Thank you, Councillor Abbott-Mintadur and seconded, Councillor Martin. Um, members, those in favour, those against, that's carried. Uh, deputations. We have three deputations tonight. Um, the first is uh, Ms Rhonda Abbott, uh, who is deputation on grants to assist carers of significant trees. Uh, Ms Abbott, if you'd like to come forward. Uh, you have five minutes to speak to the members. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. And I really appreciated the support that I got from Judy Speck uh, to make me feel very comfortable coming here. For over 15 years, we were the carers of a significant heritage tree at North Adelaide for the benefit of the wider community. The tree was located at 60 Kingston Terrace in the rear courtyard of a cottage built around 1870 and listed as state heritage. The tree was planted in the 1870s with two other elm trees that were also listed as significant. During our stewardship of the elm tree, we have estimated that we have incurred expenses of over $20,000. We received no financial support from the Strata Corporation. 
Monies were spent on branch maintenance by arborists, treatment of elm beetle, procuring silver shield interstate for treatment of the beetle, which we paid for, and finally the expense, very regrettably, of the removal of the heritage tree, requiring developmental uh, development approval from Adelaide City Council. Reluctantly, the tree was removed following advice from two arborists and the decision by a representative of Adelaide Council that removal was necessary because of damage to the fabric of the adjacent building and concerns for residents' safety. The ACC Register Protecting Significant Trees is a service to the community, not, we believe, a service to the property owner. In a fair world, council costs should be covered whole or in part by the community. Also, as it stands, the legislation simply prevents property owners damaging significant trees. It does nothing to ensure that the trees don't die from neglect. St Peter's, Paynham and Norwood Council are trialling a program to financially support carers of significant trees with grants. I believe this is reasonable and should be regarded in the same light as grants by council for heritage listed properties to assist with restoration and preservation. Significant trees are part of our heritage, require maintenance and need to be valued alongside heritage built environment. I am requesting that uh, Adelaide City Council give serious consideration to providing a similar grant scheme to assist carers of significant trees for the benefit of the wider community. And I'd like to draw um, a, a parallel here between um, the significant trees grant and state heritage building and the necessary uh, maintenance. As I said earlier, um, this is a a uh, state heritage cottage where the tree is in the backyard. Now, I acknowledge that <coughs> council gives uh, grants um, for um, maintenance on these buildings. However, the amount of money that we needed to spend to do some work inside the heritage building, um, we didn't, weren't able to get anything back for that. Um, so I, I'd just like to say that, you know, we had a double whammy there with the uh, significant tree and also the state heritage. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Evan. May I give you a copy of what I just read? Thank you. I told you Thank you, Ms. Abbott. Um, the second deputation tonight is from Mr. Zell Whiting. Uh, Mr. Z Mr. Whiting, would you like to come forward? Thank you. Good evening, Lord Mayor and Councillors. My name is Zell Whiting. I'm 13 years old, and today I represent the young people of Adelaide who are increasingly concerned about our future due to the ever-present threat of climate change. Climate change is an effect created by greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere after fossil fuels like coal are burnt. The world has become dependent on fossil fuels, but this age must become something of the past. A recent IPCC report stated that if Earth continues on the current trajectory, we will reach a point of no return by 2030. NASA has stated that the Earth is currently warming 10 times faster than any other rate of warming in history, which means our problem is 10 times worse. We are in unprecedented territory. Recent Adelaide-based research has called out the conservative estimates of the IPCC and has stated that Earth is more likely to reach a point of no return in the next four years. And just today, the Australian Antarctic Program revealed that frozen lakes just discovered under the Antarctic will greatly alter predicted sea, level, sea levels. 
This summer has broken all heat records in South Australia. Adelaide reached 48 degrees. The human cell starts deteriorating at 41 degrees Celsius and dies at 53 degrees. If this continues, vulnerable people will die, just as we have seen happen to hundreds of flying foxes and a million fish. Nowhere or no one will be able to avoid the consequences of climate change. So, Lord Mayor and Councillors, four years may seem like plenty of time to roll out the great work of the City of, Ad the City of Adelaide is doing with the Carbon Neutral Adelaide Plan, but as indicated by these recent scientific reports and the global school strikes, taking action is now extremely urgent and we need a climate emergency declaration. South Australia has always been a leader in the sustainable field. We were the first state to ban single-use plastic bags back in 2009, and we were also the first to introduce the 10-cent bottle deposit system around 40 years ago in 1977. Our track history of sustainable, de sustainable leadership makes Adelaide the ideal capital city to become Australia's leader in climate action. After personally witnessing the 6,000 students protesting at Parliament House on the 15th of March, a climate emergency being declared by the City of Adelaide is exactly the kind of leadership young people want to see. After all, that's what our politicians are, our leaders. Whether you represent a country, a state or a council, we have put our trust in you to ensure a safe future for all young people. If Adelaide City Council treats climate like the emergency that it is, it'll encourage city residents and all South Australians to rise to the challenge of reversing the climate emergency. It will have a positive influence on other local councils and also on higher levels of government. Throughout history, people have taken action when they see injustice, when women were demanding the right to vote, when conscription was introduced during the Vietnam War, the voice of the people was raised for the common good. The young people of Adelaide hope you will listen now and support the climate emergency motion on the agenda tonight. Thank you. Um. We love having people in the gallery, but we do ask that you uh, maintain your silence through the proceedings in the chamber. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Whiting, for your deputation. Uh, our third deputation tonight is Ms Kelly Henderson, who is speaking on the ABLA recommendations. Ms Henderson, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, elected members. Um, the other recommendations I'd like to refer to is on the Whitmore Square draft master plan. The final draft was available at the APLA meeting and a deputation was made to that meeting asking that there be reconsideration of um, particular aspects. A zebra crossing is highly desirable and cost effective. It is not only urgent, it is also important. It is a far better expenditure of council's funding than test creative lighting, which is neither urgent nor important. It is not something, creative lighting is not something that the Southwest community has long desired to help them reach the central market in safety. A safe pedestrian crossing of the northeast corner is. And I'd like to give an example of this design and compare it with the proposal for the Vietnamese Boat People's Memorial. The Whitmore Square Master Plan is a pretty, pretty design, but it is totally flawed in its intention. Totally flawed. It proposes to remove grass and replace it with hard surface and remove pathways that are needed that are desire lines, which will occur anyway, and replace them, albeit for a short term, with grass. It is a waste of council's money. But most significantly, it is detrimental to the Adelaide parklands. There has been insufficient or ineffective public consultation. And here's where I give the example of the boat memorial. It will be very interesting when that proposal goes out to public consultation which hasn't happened yet. 
to see how many people point out that the most appropriate location for such a monument will be the Migration Museum vicinity and not on the bank of a river. Boat people did not arrive in Australia on a river. Boat people arrived from the north of Australia, whereas the current design proposes that it depict them arriving from the south with a shore beacon to the north of them. The equivalent of that, if you engage the brain, is that the safe harbour or the safe landing is communist China or Russia. The symbolism of these designs is extremely significant but needs to have clarity and it needs to have truth. This design for Whitmore Square is highly improper and unsuitable for a national heritage listed place. It is ludicrous in some of its proposals, not just confusing, but Im impossible, infeasible, um, and council's funding should not be expended on it. So I'd urge council to reconsider the whole project, and I'd pass out. Um, could I pass on these? The community proposal, which is far more appropriate and is urgent and important, proposes a zebra crossing at the northeastern corner of Whitmore Square in the most appropriate location in a manner that will not damage the cultural integrity of the square. Supported with a 25 or 30k or 40k speed reduction zone on all road approaches to the square um, in all directions. It proposes prioritising right-hand turns of evening peak hour traffic out to West Terrace to reduce the uh, peak hour traffic through the square and the partial closure of St Louis Cohen Avenue for morning and evening peak hour. There is no connecting through road into Unley so it's, it's quite a straightforward matter for, for partial closure of that road. It also intends that we paint white zigzags on the approach roads in both lanes to the pedestrian crossings, but the Australian road rules do envisage that zebra crossings will cross multiple lanes of traffic, including multiple lanes of traffic in both directions. And our Southwest community would beg the council to do the work on getting that to be allowed by the state government and have a cost-effective solution to safe and effective uh, pedestrian safety improvements and traffic flow, improved traffic flow in the southwest corner. Effective public consultation has not been achieved in this project. We haven't had any public consultation on the Boat People Memorial, but I do hope that Council will ensure that that is effective so that we can uh, Im improve that project as well as this for the benefit of the parklands. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. A national heritage place. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. Uh, members, the next item on the agenda is uh, item number nine. Uh, Eight, which is petition. There are no petitions tonight. Can I just ask, can members hear me okay? Is that right? No, sorry, I'm just not sure for the microphone's well. Okay, we'll get to item nine, which are the recommendations of uh, the committee from the 19th of February. Uh, members, recommendation one the shaping streets and green places. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. No, you. Members, is there any discussion? If not, I'll go to the mover, Councillor Moran. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. That takes us to recommendation two, the encroachment policy. And Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move as recommended with an addition. I think it's just on. So the addition um, is endorses undertaking a further piece of work on the policy position for balconies over the public realm above first floor level to stimulate good development and give the market certainty. Also, that considers 
desired future reform of the city, the economic impact and the mobility and residential growth objectives of the city. And I'll seek a second to all that. Do I have a second to make this, Councillor Hyde? Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Just in speaking briefly to this, Lord Mayor, I did cover some aspects of this at the, um, at the uh, committee meeting. Um, the piece of work that the administration has done is incredible. I think it's uh, long-term overdue. Um, and the fact that we're uh, been able to come in and consider it tonight, which we will be considering and adopting tonight, is a great outcome for this council. There is uh, some significant changes there when it comes to Wondle Mall, encroachment at first level, et cetera, et cetera. But what the administration hasn't considered as part of this report is what happens um, after the first level when it comes to encroachments, because in the report currently, it says very clearly that they are not um, something that is favoured by council um, and it has to be all addressed on merit. Uh, what I would like to see is an opportunity where the administration can do a deeper dive into that policy and be able to highlight to the market very clearly uh, on when the market would meet an on merit decision. At the moment, when developers are having to go through and build our city population, uh, when it comes to applying to SCAP, um, that process can be impeded or potentially having to go all the way back to the drawing board uh, as the result of council not supporting an encroachment over uh, the first floor. And I think it's really important that we give certainty to the market of what they can do. Uh, and everything else outside that can be done by exception. So everything outside that can be done on merit. So potentially uh, that's where the administration can come and look at the more laborious aspects of how to assess an application uh, versus saying a blanket no to everything. So we will have the opportunity through this piece of work to consider this uh, over the next few months. And I'm hoping that the new policy position that will come in with regards to encroachments over the first level will override the current policy position depending on the outcome. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde. Reserve by right. Members, oh, Councillor Moran. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, uh, Sam knows a lot about these things, but that seems to be a direct conflict. Haven't we just um, done a plan that we don't allow um, except in exceptional circumstances? This seems to be returning, and correct me if I'm wrong when you sum up, but this seems to be returning to what we had before. Um, that um, endorsed some say a piece of work on the policy position for balconies over the public realm above the force. Have we, did, haven't we just passed a policy position? Oh, I thought we did. Um, to stimulate good development, but this seems to, in, to me, to unpack what we've done. Would you like a comment from yeah. the administration, Councillor? Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. This, this additional uh, part of the recommendation is asking for further work to be undertaken. So at this time, it's not contradicting the current policy. It's, it's I see it as an additional piece of work the council is looking to explore. So the um, the actual policy has, as written, would still be um, adopted, uh, but it's more work to be done. So. Could I ask again, though, if this was, um, if as the sun like this piece of work was done and that was adopted as our policy, would that not be just returning to the policy that we we laboured over getting rid of. I mean, I remember Sandy Wilkinson not liking the encroachments, and now this seems to have just opened, uh, after we laboriously closed the door on them, this seems to be opening the door again. No? Am I reading it wrong? Through Lord Mayor, that could be the end result, but I, I'm not sure we're at that point at this time. From my understanding, the, the position of council is quite clear at this time, but further work is to be undertaken by the administration and returned back to council. At that time, council would need to decide whether to change the policy or otherwise. Okay, well, um, I, I won't be voting for this motion with all due respect. It seems to me that we, um, and councillors that have been here, previous councillors remember, that we've gone this, when on planning assessment you had encroachments, uh, they worked, they were on merit and it came to council and we decided yes or no. And I think uh, Shanti gave some very good depictions of that. What we did was tight, well, that's I'm completely mistaken. What we did was tighten it up so that anything over the first level was basically um, not allowed, except in very exceptional circumstances. That's what I thought we voted on. So, that, that's, so, that's our, if, so as the CEO is saying, that's our policy <coughs> position for about three weeks, and now we're going to go and look at it again and turn it back. I mean, I was suspicious that something like this had happened. The Property Council had spoken so 
vehemently against us doing this. I was very surprised that, that um, it got through so easily. And I think this is the Trojan horse. This just undoes all the work we've done. Councillor Moran, members, if I can just add a comment. Um, I think when we did the workshop and went through committee, they showed us specific examples where we had approved. So this is just actually so that we get a really clear indication where we might approve and where we don't. So they talked about the orientation and the um, square meterage of the base of the footprint, the footprint, etc. And so they gave us really clear ones where they had approved. If you remember, the, um, there was one in Gilbert Street, etc. And this is just a little bit more clarity around in what circumstances circumstances we might approve. So it's an additional piece to what they've already given us. I don't think it's contrary, contradictory. Well, not I, I'll hold you to that and I'll vote for it. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Moran. I appreciate that. <coughs> Councillor Martin. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I would like to move a variation to that motion, if I may, um, so that it reads, uh, over the public realm, above um, I can't see it, sorry, no. I, it, uh, above first floor level in cases where development is at odds or development proposals are at odds. With council's policy, but may be argued to. Um, and I'll seek a second to that. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I can, I can see what uh, Councillor Abbey is trying to do, but I think this will help him a little. Um, we actually do have a policy, and I think it's very clear from the paper the administration delivered to us some 60 or 70 pages last week, which uh, set out a set of criteria um, for encroachments and particularly spoke to developments above first floor level. And the policy which was outlined by the administration uh, uh, maintained that there should be an improvement in public amenity and many other criteria that would lead to an exception to there being, as the policy it, it is proposed, an exception to there being no encroachments above first floor level. Um, that amendment sets it out clearly. It says that that is our policy, but as Councillor Abbott asks, we want some clarity for those circumstances where there might be a variation. So this narrows it down and it saves, I think, the administration a lot of time in trying to wrestle with the policy. Again, it specifically now is to the point that Councillor Abbey points out, we want some certainty for the exceptions. And the reason why we only want exceptions is because, as the administration argued very clearly in the papers that they presented to us, um, there are impacts from encroachments of balconies above first level, not only uh, in terms of the public space which is used in that process, but also in the impacts on the visual amenity of streets, and particularly in the case of this city, in the case of Adelaide with its grid network of streets, the architectural line of buildings. So that policy is established clearly in the documents that we received last week and which we endorsed. Now, I know that Councillor Aviat had some concern at that time and flagged that he would be raising an issue, and I can see exactly what he's saying. I think that will nail it. I think that will actually allow us to look at the policy exception that he's identified, not the policy as a whole, which was part of the document that was delivered to us. Now, I'm hoping that that wording is uh, sufficient for the administration. Is that accurate enough for you, CEO? Through you, Lord Mayor, of course. Through Lord Mayor, I might just ask Claire Mothler to comment on this one. It's okay. Okay, so this precisely addresses the point that Councillor Abiot has raised. If he's talking more broadly, if he's talking about all buildings, then of course you'd want to amend that again to include the application of fees. Uh, because there are no, no fees at this time to balconies above the first level in the public space. 
And indeed, if there were, for example, on the exception to the rule that we approved last year or the year before to two buildings in Hurtle Square, had the administration recommended that we impose a charge, we would have been collecting something close to $15,000 a year every year in encroachment fees at the rate of $35, which was recommended in the documents that came to us last week. Indeed, if you agree to encroachments of balconies in the public place, frankly, Lord Mayor, you're looking at potential revenue of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year. So I'm sure this isn't what Councillor Abbott's talking about, and I think this addresses his concern legally. Councillor Sims and then Councillor Kerry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I uh, support this amendment. Like uh, Councillor Moran, I was a bit perplexed by the original uh, proposal from uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor because I did think that was starting to move us away from the spirit of what we agreed just last week. And I think it's very important when we're dealing with matters like this that the Council is not seen to cave in under pressure from vested interests. And we did see a, a lot of uh, advocacy from the Property Council and others, uh, which was based on misinformation. It was a scare campaign based on misinformation. Um, and so I support this amendment because what I think uh, Councillor Martin is doing is really confining um, the piece of work that's coming down the line so that we still maintain um, the spirit of the decision that we made last week. Um, so I'm supporting this and uh, I encourage other councillors to get on board as well. Um, it was a recommendation that we made last week, Councillor. Uh, the decision comes to Council. Um, are there any other councillors? Oh, sorry, Councillor Kerr, and then back to you. Yeah, look, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to express a little bit of, uh, not frustration, but um, a little bit of, uh, can, can we get down and get practical about this? I think it almost looks like we've had uh, uh, an initial amendment which sought to, uh, and, Forgive me, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, but not, if not quite pull out the rug from the uh, from the policy, at least allow that to happen. But we've had a further amendment that seeks to put the rug back in place. Um, so, speaking a bit from the sidelines, I think um, I think this issue. I suspect we have not had a chance to properly have it out about this issue. I don't think that we uh, really expressed. I, I, I didn't. I wasn't comfortable with the level. Uh, an amount of discussion about this at the last committee. Um, I think this is a significant uh, change, but my initial, well, my view coming into the chamber today was that I was supportive of the administration's policy because I think it's, it's a difficult one to articulate. Uh, it's, it is a, it's an aesthetic matter, but it's, it's more than aesthetics. I think that if you go, uh, walk down uh, any of our major streets or drive or take a scooter, and just look up and see. It, it is actually, to me, quite manifest. I think the basis of having balconies set back after the first law is really quite manifest if you go down and have a look. Um, the, the, the encroachment, you know, it's just, just, just visualise it. Uh, when we, and I would, I would recommend members do that. Visualise this when you walk down in the city uh, the next time you're down there, because that is the best way to come in informed on this. So I would simply like an opportunity for us to actually properly have this out, so we're comfortable, so we don't have a decision that feels like we've made it uh, too quickly without really thinking it through. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure whether I'm speaking in favour of the amendment or not, um, but, <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, um, I, I think. I mean, the amendment as it is it seems to cement the policy. Uh, and I think that if uh, I would encourage other members to stand up and say, uh, there's nothing wrong in saying, look, I haven't, we haven't had time to really talk this through. Um, the only thing you can do if you want more time around that is to either do a referral or when the, this piece of work comes back in, if this amendment gets through, then to talk through it then. I really don't want to put in another amendment on top of the two already, but um, you know, if 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 members feel that they need a, a different, I think you know what I'm going to be quiet. Let's just see how this amendment goes. <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I speak against this current amendment because if I thought there was a better way to do it, I would have done it. That's not my intention. Uh, to word it this way, um, the complete opposite, as a matter of fact. Um, we need to remind councillors, what we endorsed last week was a committee committee recommendation to this council. 
So we haven't we haven't had an endorsed position on anything. This is still a loose policy. We have gone through a review of encroachment policy. The first opportunity for elected members to have a look at this was at the committee, uh, and that's it. We've had a workshop before that, and as elected members in the previous council, we have seen the duration of it as well. As I said, there's a significant amount of work that's been done already to date that if this, uh, not this, the one I've, I've moved before as, a, as an alternative is passed, that <coughs> policy will be endorsed. What I'm asking for here is a further piece of work. This doesn't lock into does this, this doesn't lock council into anything. What this council said, what this says, is do a further piece of work that talks about what if we have the opportunity instead of telling our kids that every time you want to go out, you've got to come and ask for permission. How about we say to them, if you're home by 6 p.m. every night, we're good. That's what we need to tell the market. What we're saying under our current policy position at the moment is nothing is allowed. You've got to come to us at all times and it's got to be on merit. I know there's situations in the city where this council has endorsed encroachments uh, policies where it's been perfectly fine. So let's highlight where it's perfectly fine everywhere and give that to the market and everything outside that, this council will endorse on merit. So which is the complete opposite of that actually. All right. So that's the intention of what I'm trying to achieve. We don't have a current council policy or council position on it. And what we're doing in this current policy is a better move than the previous policy we've had. The previous policy we had had a very similar position on dealing with encroachment. So we're not going back to Councillor Moran's point on what the policy was before. Our policy before was the same as the policy it is now. We assess it on merit. It's a no from us. That's what I'm trying to create. We need to, as a council, make a decision. If we want to see better development in the city, we want to see more livable development and more affordable development, we don't want to keep cost, creating cost and encroachment costs that are ongoing. I'm all for having a one-off encroachment fee. There's no problem whatsoever. But let's have that discussion in that policy paper. Because in that policy paper, when it comes back, it will tell us the do's, the don'ts, the costs, the things we can achieve, the things we can't achieve. And it will help us to unpack this to a subcategory. At the moment, this is a macro level. I'm asking that we go into the micro level and look at what areas in the city, if we can map this out using our software, our e planning, everything we do, to determine areas that we will give the tick on because we are happy to see encroachment on those spaces. That's all I'm asking. So I ask members not to support this. <coughs> Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, I think this amendment to the original motion improves it. And I don't think it takes completely away what uh, Hassan is saying. I think Councillor Kier is, is correct in that the, the the amendment does potentially pull the rug out from what we decided. And um, I don't want to pull it out that far. I've been on assessment a long time. We do assess encroachments uh, on a uh, case by case, and that's worked quite well. Uh, what we agreed, and we did agree in the committee, it's not a formal vote, but it's not a, a binding vote, but we all did unanimously agree to tighten up our encroachment above the first level law. It's not complicated like the councillors making it. We decided to make it harder to do what that. Our planning staff explained it extremely carefully. Um, some of you will vote for this, uh, Sam's original one, I'm sure, because it is just undertaking a piece of work. What? We have just unanimously decided to do something else. So why would you waste our staff time doing a piece of work that we've just decided not to do? So um, I would rather just delete both the um, amendments, but as the second one is a softer one and does point out that we'll only anticipate um, encroachments when there is an unusual situation, a difficult development situation, that it doesn't become the norm. Um, and that's what, honestly, I, I, I'm pretty sure the way I know the way this is going. And if the staff are set off to that hair successfully, it is just really, what, what was the point of the other night? It is ridiculous. Lord Mayor, just very briefly, um, I think this is a good opportunity for us to think about the PDI Act that is uh, very slowly getting switched on. 
by July 2020, the PDI Act uh, will be in full motion. And um, one of the purposes of the Act, um, I think, is that uh, it's there to streamline the planning process. I think uh, the original amendment uh, shows that um, we are slowly streamlining our own processes. And if anything, it will send a uh, strong message to the state government that uh, uh, we are streamlining our, uh, our policies and our processes, and we are ready for the PDI Act to, to come in so that uh, when uh, the PDI Act does, uh, uh, does come in in July 2020, uh, we'll uh, at least have um, some policies and processes that uh, have been looked at, reviewed, and uh, uh, we're already in motion. Councillor, uh, any other members wish to speak to the amendment? If not, Councillor Martin, to someone. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, let, let's be very clear about this. There's a, a lot of muddied water here. What was approved at committee last week was the endorsement of the policy, the revised encroachment policy. Uh, committee recommends to council we adopt the revised policy. The revised policy spoke to the policy on encroachments, whether they be underground or above ground, and also detailed in very precise form to conform with the PDI Act changes which will occur, as Councillor Abrahimza has said, in July next year, will conform with all of that. The effect of Councillor Abiyad's motion is that it says we endorse the policy, but we send the administration back to do work on balconies, balconies over public space. This is something that is greatly and strongly opposed by the Property Council. Its view is that we should allow balconies over the public space. The body of the work which was done by the administration over almost four years, four years of hard work, reached conclusions, including designs, that were put to you at committee last week. If you do not support this motion, then you are sending the administration back to start the work they began four years ago. That is the effect of Councillor Abiot's amendment. The effect of my amendment is to address that tiny paragraph in here that says, if there are exceptions, then they will be judged on merit. And I think this addresses the point, that is, we ask that in those exceptional circumstances, the administration provide for us a formula for dealing with them. That's as simple as it is. It's straightforward. The waters are being muddied. You are being invited to incur more council cost, more council time, and with the inevitable conclusion that the government will think that we're a mob of idiots. We have a policy. Just please approve it. Help Councillor Abiyad by allowing the investigation of those exceptional circumstances that he's talking about, the ones where a developer comes along and says, my name's Frank Geary, I'm the world's best architect, and I'm here to deliver a building to you that will encroach on public space. This policy allows that. And this amendment that I proposed will actually tell Mr Geary exactly what the conditions are that we expect of him. Now, this is very straightforward. I urge you to support this. Anything less will send a strong message to everyone who understands planning, to everyone in government, that we are indeed not up to the job. Members, uh, those in favour of the amendment? Those against? That's lost. Division, division. <laughs> Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Carer, Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims. <laughs> uh, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Oh, is there any further discussion? Uh, sorry, just, just one moment. So we'll go back to the alternate motion. Uh, is there any more discussion? Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, look, I, I am disappointed that this has ended up on factional lines. This is oh, a... Sorry, Councillor Martin, um, you've already spoken. I've been advised that you can't speak to this 
I haven't spoken to the substantive. Sorry, through the presiding member, Councillor Martin, when you moved your amendment, you were given to, a spoke, to have spoken to the original motion. That was your opportunity to but speak. But not the substantive. The alternative motion was the substantive motion. Okay. There was nothing moved before that. Thank you, councillors. I'm back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Sum up. Um, if I can then go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That Vision. is carried. Councillors, <laughs> councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, and Councillor Knoll. Members, that takes us to recommendation three, Vietnamese Boat Peter Monument. I have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, I acknowledge uh, the presence uh, in the gallery, if you'll indulge me, Lord Mayor, of the uh, members of the Vietnamese community who've come here tonight um, uh, to see, to witness this council uh, approving the motion, which um, uh, we considered and debated at length, I have to add, Lord Mayor, at uh, committee last week, um, but which gives uh, the go ahead to the construction and location of a memorial to Vietnamese boat people on the banks of the Torrens. Now, uh, I have to say to you, Lord Mayor, I don't have uh, any of the, uh, the reservations that were expressed uh, here tonight in the public deputation about the worth of this memorial or its location as proposed. Um, I actually endorse uh, its construction because it acknowledges the significant contribution to our community of uh, the Vietnamese who arrived in this country in the years uh, following the 1970s. I asked uh, recently a member of the community um, how many uh, Vietnamese people there were in uh, Adelaide, and the community, I'm told, is well over 20,000 people, making it one of our uh, biggest communities in this our multicultural Adelaide. Um, the community, Lord Mayor, has made a significant contribution to this state. And uh, I don't need to remind everybody that uh, the vice regal representative in our state is a member of the Vietnamese community. And uh, we're honored tonight to have a member of the Vietnamese community who is a member of the Legislative Council in the gallery. Um, I look forward to seeing uh, this monument completed and I look forward to being there on the day to applaud its unveiling. And I commend this to members and invite them to support it. Thank you, Councillor Martin, Deputy Lord Mayor. I was in my Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I also wanted to add my support to this project. I think um, this is a, a fantastic initiative. It's something that really reflects the diversity of our city. Um, and uh, I think also something that celebrates the um, contribution that refugees have made to our country uh, at a time when I think that's very important to uh, recognise contribution of refugees, the role that they have played um, in making Adelaide and indeed our state the, the place that it is. So I'm very supportive of um, this project. Thank you, members. Any further speech? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Sum up, Lord sum up. And to vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Lord Mayor, may I ask that the minutes record it was a unanimous decision of Council? Yes, you may, Councillor Martin. If you can record that it was a unanimous decision. And thank you in the gallery. Members, that takes us to recommendation four, uh, which is the National General Assembly of Local Government. Uh, first is a procedural, um, and then we'll go to the appointment. So for the procedural, if I could have someone nominate, thank you. Oh, sorry, motion. Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Noel. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? No, members, anybody speak to it? If not, Councillor Noel? No. Back to the Deputy Lord Mayor, sum up. Thank you, members, to vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. 
Um, I will now look for a voting member, so to the appointment of a voting member for the uh, uh, for the assembly, Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, I'm aware that Councillor Donovan wanted to attend, but was taken ill at the last minute this evening. Um, I'm wondering, in the absence of anyone else wanting um, to be a voting delegate, whether we might defer this matter until she's recovered. Um, Councillor Martin, if you wish to nominate Councillor Donovan, um, she has actually given me her acceptance uh, of the nomination should be she be nominated, which is acceptable. Oh, that's fine. Then I, I nominate Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Uh, if not, would anybody... So, if um, members could vote and those in favour, those against. <laughs> I do know you're a seconder for the nomination. Apologies, member. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Hyde. <laughs> Members, that takes us to item 9.2 on the agenda. which is um, the advice of the um, Adelaide Parklands Authority. So if I could have a member move. Thank you, Councillor Moran, seconded Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? No, I don't, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? No, if not, Councillor Moran, sum up. Sum up, thank you. Thank you, those in favour, members? Thank you, those against, that is carried. Um, members of the gallery that were here for the Vietnamese Boat People Monument, uh, you are free to leave if you would like to leave, uh, given that that uh, recommendation has been carried. You're very welcome to stay if you'd like to stay through the rest of our council meeting. And thank you for attending tonight. It's lovely to see so many of you here. Members, we'll go to item 10, which is the presiding member's report. Thank you, members. Um, it was my pleasure recently to put pen to paper on the long-awaited Adelaide City Deal, which will have a long-term transformative effect on the City of Adelaide. The redevelopment of Lot 14 will support local emerging industries, create a new cultural destination, and inject a significant number of people into the area to support our East End traders. The direct funding for the City of Adelaide will ensure we can continue to invest in our smart city technology, which will improve residential business and visitor experiences. Earlier this month, I attended my first meeting of the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors, known as Triple CLM. On this occasion, the quarterly meeting was held in Hobart and included discussions on the rollout of the 5G telecommunications technology and advertising billboards on phone booths, the importance of developing creative spaces, climate change resilience, homelessness, and the federal election advocacy. Um, I look forward to sharing more details of these discussions and outcomes with members shortly. We've had another fabulous festival season, which has just wrapped up. Uh, record attendances and record sales. Ticket sales were reported for the Adelaide Fringe, the Adelaide Festival and Wham Adelaide. Accessibility was increased in partnerships with local NGOs and Council hosted a session of the Adelaide Fringe's Honeypot Creative Marketplace at the Town Hall. 
From iconic sculptures to bright murals, the City of Adelaide benefits from our investment and support of public art. Uh, I recently attended the launch event to start engagement on Council's new public art action plan with more than 80 attendance, uh, attendees at the Minor Works building. The community consultation process is currently underway and is accessible on our Council's website. Hyundai's latest electric vehicle was launched in Adelaide uh, recently with more than a dozen national motorist journalists, motoring journalists, sorry, visiting our city for the event. Adelaide was chosen because of our leadership in electric vehicle support and sustainability along with the collaborative approach displayed by our team. Council's Rundle Street U Park provided conveniently located infrastructure uh, with the recently installed EV charging points. Uh, next door to the hotel where all the journalists were staying um, and it was commented by many of them. Uh, last week I hosted the annual Lord, Wears, uh, Lord, Wears, Lord Mayor's Welcome for International Students at the Town Hall which was attended by more than 650 people. Um, and I thank Councillor Ho for attending with me. Uh, it was an amazing night um, and uh, I've never had my photograph taken so much ever in all of my years. Um, members, we recently passed our 120 days, 120 days since our election. And if we actually look at the Christmas recess, that takes us to our 90 days in office. So I just want to do a really quick recap, just in bullet point form, of some of the achievements that we've had over the our first few months in office. The Adelaide City deal was signed. We have achieved uh, the skate park in, on West Terrace in Park 25, uh, the Gladys Elphick Park. Uh, we are partnered with Black Spot Funding for the intersection of Glover Terrace and West Terrace, uh, which we hadn't been able to agree <coughs> to two previous rounds to the federal government. Um, we are now actually be able to um, do the work needed at that intersection. We found a way forward for North Adelaide parking after three years, I think, possibly more, and we're about to do the rollout of that parking um, pilot for a year in North Adelaide. Um, we were partnering with the state government and we're funding for the Quinton Kenahan play space uh, in acknowledgement of Quinton, which will be built in uh, Rum Park in the city. We've had two e-scooter trials, a second trial currently underway while we do the expression of interest and had more than 100,000 trips on those e-scooters in a five week period that they've been around. And we also passed a number of budget considerations through motions including options to reduce costs for businesses, for local residents and making it easier to do business in the city with a refocus on the main streets. I think that's a pretty good achievement. Uh, well done all of you for three months in office. Just imagine what we're going to be able to do in four years. Finally, members, I'd like to formally acknowledge the violent terrorist attack that occurred just over a week ago. in our sister city of Christchurch in New Zealand. Um, I have spoken to Mayor Leanne Dalzell to offer our condolences and also support on behalf of the people of Adelaide. In the wake of this act, I've been uplifted by the strong community outpouring of compassion and the binding symbols of mateship and the announcement of this extremism. And last week on Harmony Day, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. The Premier and I hosted a community vigil in Elder Park. It was a fabulous display of community love for those impacted, the humanity we stand for and the goodwill of the multicultural community from a mix of faiths and beliefs to share in the grief of those affected. We also collected hundreds of support messages from the community which will be shared with the City of Christchurch um, and people can still send their messages through our customer service centre. I would like to thank the many City of Adelaide uh, team members and the team from Department of Premier and Cabinet for pulling the event together last week, collaborative on short notice. And I'll also uh, pay tribute to our Deputy Lord Mayor who spoke uh, so brilliantly and passionately at the mosque service on the Sunday night. Members, I now ask you to stand and join me in observing one minute silence in memory of those whose lives were tragically cut short.
Thank you, members. Thank you in the gallery. Members, um, we have uh, uh, item 11, uh, council reports, item 11.1. .1. If I could have someone move the report, Councillor Sims and a seconder. Councillor Kerra, Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Kerra, any amendments, members? If not, Councillor Sims, to sum up? Thank you, members, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Um, Apologies, members. Could I have a mover and a seconder for my report? Thank you, Councillor High, seconded Councillor Moran. Those in favour? Thank you. Um, members, given we have uh, a number of our community members in the gallery tonight, I'm going to bring item 15.2, which is Councillor Sims' motions on notice the response to climate change forward. Um, so I'll ask Councillor Sims uh, to please move his motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The motion that I'm moving tonight recognises the serious threat of climate change, commits us to continuing the good work of Council in this regard, but also identifies future opportunities to build on this work in the next budget cycle. Now, it's no surprise to members of this council that Adelaide City Council has been a national leader in the area of climate change for many, many years. Indeed, Lord Mayors Yarwood and Hazy were very strong advocates in this space. Um, Lord Mayor, former Lord Mayor Martin Hazy is now the chair of the Premier's Climate Change Council. And this is a tradition that has continued under your leadership, Lord Mayor, and I do want to recognise your work on the Premier's Climate Change Council, but also as an advocate for waste reduction and reducing single-use plastics. And uh, I want to thank you for your input into this motion and also the assistance of administration. Council's leadership on climate change really represents the broad support that we have for taking action on this in the community. This isn't something that is championed by any one particular sector or any particular political party. Indeed, the business sector recognises that climate change is essential for the future of our economy. In January of this year, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority Executive Jeff Summerhays warned that addressing climate change had become a financial necessity. And earlier this month, the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of Australia warned of the potential for climate change to cause a shock to our economy. Indeed, the Reserve Bank warned that financial stability could be put at risk if businesses remained unaware of the increased costs in insurance payouts, pollution-driven reputational damage, legal liability and regulation. And these changes could cause valuable assets to become uneconomic. Now, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, by definition, Lord Mayor, is a pretty conservative institution, but it recognises, and the Reserve Bank recognises, that climate change is a threat to our way of life. Now, none of this will be news to Adelaide residents because, of course, this summer we've experienced our hottest ever summer on record, our hottest ever day on record, and we're experiencing more days with extreme temperatures than any other major city in Australia. So climate change is no longer something that we can say is going to happen in the future or it's going to happen sometime down in the never never. We're feeling the consequences now and the responsibility rests with us and all levels of government, state, federal and local to take action. This is a serious emergency. It represents a threat to our well-being, our economy, our built infrastructure, our services, our waste supplies, our environment and our reputation as a livable city. This motion tonight recognises that reality. 406 local councils across the world have already passed similar motions recognising the emergency and committing to action. And if we take this approach tonight, if we take this action tonight, we will be the first capital city in Australia to do so. Given our proud tradition of work in this area, it is only fitting that Adelaide joins this global movement. I want to draw Council's attention to an online petition that has been circulating in support of this motion. Last I checked, it had 750 signatures. It is clear that there is strong support for Council being 
seek a short extension of time, Lord Mayor. Thank you. It is clear that there is strong support for Council being a leader in this space. And we saw the huge momentum behind young people protesting and marching the streets here in Adelaide, but also right across the country in support of action for climate change just last week. There are other, other there are SA councils, other councils meeting tonight to consider similar motions, three in fact, and we cannot afford to be left behind. If passed, this motion will ask administration to investigate new opportunities to ensure that Adelaide is climate ready. Looking at things like improving water resilience and also greening our city streets, recognising that there are some pockets of the city that have been overlooked. And as a result of this motion, the Lord Mayor would also raise the potential to electrify our car fleets and look at decarbonising the city bus, working in collaboration with the state government. Now, I know that sometimes there is a tendency to tinker with motions on the floor of this council, but this is not one of those times. This isn't the time for swibbling. Given the seriousness of climate change, I'm hopeful that this motion will be a unifying moment for the council, and I encourage you to support it. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, uh, I endorse uh, uh, Councillor Sims's comments. Um, and I note that everything that is proposed in his uh, motion is pretty much an endorsement of everything we're doing. This city of Adelaide has a target to be carbon neutral. And in that endeavour, we've in, embarked on a range of measures uh, over a number of years to establish that reputation. Indeed, uh, as you know, Lord Mayor, we've been recognised not only in this city and state, but globally for those efforts. Um, so who could object to this motion? It makes absolute sense. Um, who'd object to making a small water resident? Um, and who'd object to the, uh, the distribution of greening in the city of Adelaide, a matter which, uh, by the way, this council considered only recently when Councillor Hyde raised the matter with uh, respect to Southport, which has consequently been funded by uh, the city. And the other initiative is to ask the state government if we can work together to electrify our current fleet of vehicles. And now that is, of course, something that we're striving to do already. And so this further reinforces that. Uh, and as for the electrifying of uh, public transport, such as buses and our own connect bus, um, hooray, um, goodbye uh, to those emission belching buses, I say. Um, and I know also, uh, for the benefit of the new councillors, that one of the uh, free connected bus services is already a solar battery powered bus, Tinder, which was purchased in a groundbreaking initiative by this council uh, during the years of uh, Mayor Harbison. Lord Mayor, only a person prepared to be labelled a climate change denier could oppose this. It is a straightforward motion. Um, I want I want to acknowledge that uh, you worked and helped uh, uh, Councillor Sims uh, with the wording of this motion. Uh, I think it is worthwhile. And I ask members who are thinking of opposing this to consider the embarrassment uh, that is that would flow to this council by denying a climate emergency. I point out that the, uh, the former Lord Mayor is the chair, as uh, Councillor Sims mentioned, of the Premier's Climate Change Council. And the Lord Mayor also sits on the Climate Change Council um, with, the, with the Lord Mayor. Um, and I believe uh, it would be a slap in the, in the face for our initiatives, for our record as a, a city that is striving to be not only carbon neutral, but recognises the underly underlying fundamental reason for that, which is um, to mitigate the effects of climate change. Please support this and bear in mind that your vote will affect the reputation and standing of this council. Members. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I propose moving an amendment, please. Oh. There we go. Everyone's given their time, Lord Mayor. I'm sure I can allow be allowed mine. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move to the late, if you could please show the motion as it is. 
So item one to remain as it is, so recognises dot points, sorry, just the dot points. If you could remove the last three dot points of item one. Thank you. And remove item four. I'll uh, seek a second, though. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Look, before Councillor Sims' time, Councillor Martin's time, and even my time on this council, uh, very true, this council has led the way uh, in sustainability, and this council has led the way uh, in many aspects in inducting programs and putting programs in place that the state government at the time, even the federal government at the time, haven't done. And the important thing to note, and this is what I really like about item one, is it recognises that the City of Adelaide has been taking action with that regard for over 20 years, which is the case. What this also does is support the administration to continue the delivery of such programs without having to make multiple statements. And three talks about investigating new opportunities in that space, which talks to our carbon neutral Adelaide, and it talks about the existing relationships that we have with the state government to deliver on such outcomes. I think it's really important to know uh, where we sit as a council in our role, and we th I think we do enough in that space as it is, and we were just discussing not long ago uh, the impost on ratepayers and the expense we've got to manage as a result. What I'm fearful of is the more that this council takes on board in the way of finding solutions for governments, the more our ratepayers are paying for it where the state and the federal government has a mandate and an obligation to deliver on those outcomes. And to go back to this issue, South Australia produces less than 0.0884% of the world global emissions. This is South Australia as a whole. The city of Adelaide, with the 200,000 daily visitors, produce less than 0.01% of those emissions globally, worldwide. I do support sustainability initiatives, and as you've seen, we have backed carbon neutral Adelaide, solar PV incentive programs, greening of our city, better, better energy rating through better planning, better waste management, the banning of plastics, the banning of plastic thralls through policy. We have seen the support of separated bikeways. We've seen the support of e-scooters in the city. And we continue to support such initiatives and nothing will stop us from supporting such initiatives. And above all, I think the most important thing to take into account here, the role we have to play from an advocacy perspective and the impact this has on our budget. This is what we need to be cognizant of. If members want to push this outside the room, there's an opportunity state and federal for them to take more of an active support. And we've seen that rise through the community where they have gone actively, they have campaigned, they have protested, and we've heard it loud and clear. This council already does enough. If you want more to be done, please work with the state and federal government to deliver more outcomes. We're prepared to partner. We're prepared to work with them, with them to deliver those initiatives. But we are reaching our limit. I think I believe in our current budget, we'll be spending anywhere between three to $5 million. That's 5% of our rates on such initiatives. And it's very important that we do so. We need to avoid duplication and we need to be mindful of all times that we are spending ratepayers' money on initiatives that I value and I think they're important, but we need to understand our role. We are a local government, a capital city government for that matter, but we also need to understand our impact on that footprint. If we spend millions to eradicate this, it's only 0.01%. So we need to be mindful of that. Councillor Hyde. I uh, have Councillor Sims and Moran and Karen. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Obviously, I don't support this amendment. Um, Councillor Abiyad has completely missed the point of this motion. Um, we are already doing a lot of work in this regard. There's no question about that. But what I was proposing was that we recognise the reality of what's happening to our climate. We recognise the implications of that by joining over 400 councils around the planet um, and recognising that there is, in fact, a climate emergency. And ripping that out really does rip the heart out of this motion. And I'm very disappointed to see council going down this path, particularly when, since the election, we've seen this council oppose divesting from fossil fuels. We've seen this council oppose 
finally progressing the east-west bikeway. We've seen that pushed off into the Never Never in a workshop at some point in the future. I do not understand why there are people on this council that are so afraid of taking a strong position. Um, and I think to uh, remove this reference is really politically incompetent when one considers the work that has been done by this council over many, many years. I'm really surprised and really disappointed that this is the approach that's being taken because I would have hoped that this could be a moment where we all get behind something like this, we can go out and send a really strong message to the community to say we stand with you, we stand with the school students that have been out protesting and taking action. We stand with not just the people of uh, our own nation, but those across the planet that are feeling the implications of climate change. But also what we could have done through supporting this motion was send a message to other capital cities that they should also come on board, match what Adelaide is doing. Other cities across um, the, uh, the state and the country, look at what Adelaide's doing we're leading in this direction and take note. And it's really disappointing that that opportunity is going to be passed up. There are three other councils uh, that are going to be voting on motions similar to this tonight. And it would be really embarrassing if Adelaide was to come out of this meeting being the only one of the three that didn't actually support declaring a climate emergency. So I would urge councillors that are thinking of supporting this amendment to think again, because it will go down like a lead balloon in the community. Um, just uh, as a point of correction, we're actually looking at bikeways next week in our committee. Um, Councillor Moran? <clears throat> yes, um, I think this is a terrible shame. Um, the one thing that I have to my advantage in this council is the length of time that I've been on council. And um, I'm sure the younger people are smarter and, and more political. But I can tell you this, in all my time on council, I've never seen a motion a, a good-hearted motion like this that doesn't cause us any more expense, but accepts the climate emergency catchphrase, call to arms, that uh, that other councils have done. We've heard wonderful speeches from the young gentlemen. They want us to say, that, to recognise it as a climate emergency. And I, I'm going to speak very frankly. This is a very factionalised council. And I know you all scoff and say if there's not a team Adelaide. Point and you're of order, Councillor Moran, we are talking to the motion. I am talking to the motion. And when I would like the gallery to watch how this council votes. Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, myself, might as well, and Councillor Curris is not here, might as well not be here. We can put up day as day. Sorry, not because Helen. I always get you mixed up. You look so alike. <laughs> uh, there are four councillors in this council that might, might as well not be here. And I'm shocked that a motion that, uh, and Count the Deputy Lord Mayor said true to that statement. This is a motion that fits completely into the Lord Mayor's vision for her council. And Team Adelaide was supposed to be put together to put a voting block to allow Miss Vershaw then vision to get through. And this is her vision. She is a green, uh, committed to the green agenda. Now, whatever the Hassam says, uh, Councillor Abad says, this is unpicking, an unpickable um, motion. I'm asking those members, previously known as Team Adelaide, to really not do that to this council. Really, not serious. You, it is like, I, I'm, I will be removing my motions on notice uh, about rate freeze and things like that. that. That also is a motion that couldn't be voted against because you've all said it publicly. But I will take it out because I know Mary won't vote for it. I know Franz won't vote for it because your faction leader has told you not to. Okay? Point of order, okay, well, Councillor Moran. Prove me We're wrong. talking prove to the motion. Councillor Moran, have you finished speaking to the motion? Councillor Kerr. Uh, well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, Lord Mayor, I believe in climate change. Um, I believe in, in climate change. What I don't believe in is the co-opting uh, of local government, the co-opting of the institutions of government to push sectional political interests. And unfortunately, unfortunately, what's been demonstrated already by the words coming from Councillor Sims are that this is principally what this is, uh, what this is about. Um, we have been told, the other councillors, the other members have been told really insultingly that we ought to be not be afraid of making strong decisions. 
Well, I'm sorry, we are not afraid of making strong decisions. I've only been here uh, briefly, but I've seen strong decisions made from this council and from previous councils about climate change. The budget papers are already out. There is approximately $4 million uh, each financial year being spent on, on climate change and, and environmental matters, $4 million. There is an estimate on the amount of electricity, uh, on, on, on the uh, contracts for electricity uh, to be used uh, down the track. I, I can't remember whether that's in confidence or not, but it's in the tens of millions of dollars. It is incredibly insulting to, to suggest that if we do not accept uh, this motion tonight, that we are somehow not, not making strong decisions and that we are somehow not mindful of climate change. Um, I, think, uh, I think that is wrong. And a declaration of emergency, Lord Mayor, politics is the battle for the middle ground. It's the battle for the middle ground. You can either be a sectional interest and push something that builds your brand and gets your kudos in a certain section of the media, or you can do something that actually builds uh, a case overall for the middle ground. The public sees that, that local government does not have a mandate to declare an emergency. That is reserved for the federal government. The upshot of this sort of thing is it going to turn people away from what we do. That is the upshot. And I'm sorry if that is difficult to, to digest. I'm sorry if it doesn't give you the feel goods right now. But we have to act responsibly. We have to do what we think is in the overall interest of our constituents. I do not see that the original motion is in that. I do see that the amended motion addresses that. And I'm in support of it. Thank you. Councillor Koros and then Councillor Martin. I too believe in climate change and I admire the young today that came in and spoke to us and, uh, and I admire the young that uh, campaigned to the uh, protested to the parliament and, and I admire them for it. But I too feel very insulted that it's been twist around that we have to vote for the original motion and if we don't, then we are part of a team and we don't have our own viewpoint. We don't. Well, that's, then your, then that's actually your opinion. No, uh, Lord Mayor. Lord Councillor, Mayor. Councillor Moran, thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, councillors, Councillor Kouros is speaking, thank you. So I, I feel very insulted that, uh, that this was brought forward in and twisted in a way and viewed in a way that for their own benefit to support uh, the original motion. So therefore, um, I agree with the amended motion myself because we are here for the rate payers, yes, right? Yes. So we are here for the rate payers. And we are here, and as a council, we are here to... Uh, we are here. Okay, we are here. members and members of the gallery, if uh, I'm sorry, I will ask you to keep your mutterings to yourself, please, while we are in chambers. Thank you, Councillor. We Cross. are here for all ratepayers and we are here to make those tough decisions. And I believe this amendment does support that, it does support climate change, and um, I do support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I understand uh, why members are being defensive about this, because what they're trying to do is to defend an unreasonable position. Councillor Abbey had said that this council has led the way on initiatives associated with climate change. Tonight, he's winding it back. He's sending us back to where we were years ago, denying that there's a climate emergency. Now, this city is in the grip of a climate emergency and this council is in the grip of conservative voices who are using words that I've heard from the most conservative people who are climate deniers. To be saying, we don't put out much pollution, we don't have to worry, is it could come from the words, uh, from the mouths of people like Tony Abbott. It is just nonsense. We all have a responsibility. We all have, we all have a responsibility to accept that there are things that we can do to make a difference. And one of those is simply acknowledging, as people all over the world are, that there is a climate emergency. If you take the words out, if you water down the motion, if you argue, as is being argued, that this is somehow some great impost on the city of Adelaide, when in fact, there's no additional spending measure here, it just says, let's look at it. It's not unreasonable to be arguing that this is unreasonable and somehow that by 
putting this forward, you're out of touch with the community, suggests that the people who are putting that kind of argument are out of touch well and truly. Councillors, any other speakers? If not, I will go back. Sorry, Councillor Knoll. I will just have just a, a few words as I, as I do. Look, uh, the objective, if you look at the substantive component of, of what, what we're uh, is proposing here, we're, we're continuing to do all the things we say we're doing. When I looked at the advice from uh, the, the administration, it was one of the shortest term, short of uh, uh, advices that we were given because we are doing the things that uh, we say we're doing. You know, we really uh, uh, are at the forefront. and. Uh, don't forget, we're a small city council, and it's important that we take the lead, which is what this is all about. The issue is, though, we also need to take all the other councils with us, and it's that collaboration component that we should be actually pushing along as well, because that will make, obviously, a much more substantial difference. And I think our leadership role is much about that. So certainly doing this and certainly delivering uh, all of the, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the things we are doing towards improving our climate position, and obviously the greening and all the other things that we've been talking about. But the main issue we do need to remember is that we're part of a large city uh, and that uh, we need to draw them into what we're doing as well. And doing, uh, you know, specifically political type statements doesn't really deliver those outcomes. And I'm all for uh, improving our situations and, and uh, you know, our, our climate, uh, when, that for improving the climate, because you know it makes business sense to do that. But by just isolating us without actually working with the greater community and the greater councils, uh, we are doing ourselves a disservice because we're doing tokenism uh, when we should be actually working together to deliver genuine outcomes for South Adelaide and South Australians uh, uh, in our community and then really to make a difference. And I think uh, we, that's, we should be going along those ways, actually delivering rather than making uh, you know, vitriolic or what sort of statements that uh, only you know, try to inflame. Councillors. Any other speakers? If not, I go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The intent, which is actually the things we can do, which is recognising what we have done, recognising what we're still doing, continuing to do it, and looking at new initiatives to fund and to be able to create better and more, more opportunities for us to be climate ready, is what this council is capable of doing. This is what we do, and we are doing it. The fact that some councillors want to see motherhood statements that deliver nothing, absolutely nothing, is the, is the problem we are fighting. It's been the same thing on the fossil fuel uh, on the fossil fuel divestment discussion when we looked at it deep. We're not changing our ATM, we're not changing our transactions, we're not changing anything. We're just putting out a statement out to the public to say we're divested from fossil fuels, where, as a matter of fact, we're not doing any of that. Uh, on the bikeways, this council has rolled them out. I have been a person that have pushed for the extension of bikeways in the yes, city of Adelaide, and we've delivered that. These are the things that need to be talked about. Members, if we Deputy are Lord here, Mayor is speaking. If we are here to declare emergencies, I grew up for 15 years in a civil war. I have a Muslim background. Why don't we declare an emergency on terrorism? Why don't we declare an emergency on immigration? Why don't we declare an emergency on all the issues, on war that's happening all over the world, that's killing people by the millions? If this is the role of council, then why don't we hear all of that? I ask elected members that cannot find way on this council to resign and to run for state and federal politics where they can affect the real change they want to see in this world because this council, this council can affect change. We can live within our means and this is how we do it. Members, we will now go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? What a shock! <laughs> Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Canal. Uh, that then becomes a substantive. Uh, any further discussion, members? If not, I'll go to Councillor Sims to sum up. Councillor Sims. Well, this is very disappointing, uh, Lord Mayor. This is very, very disappointing because it was an opportunity for us to recognise uh, to recognise the seriousness of the crisis that we face, 
And I'm surprised to hear members of this council continue to claim that this is not a responsibility for our level of government. Climate change, is, climate change affects every level of government, local, state and federal. It is core business. It is core business and it is incumbent on us to play a leadership role. And um, we've really missed an opportunity to do that tonight by sending a bold statement. So I'm really disappointed. And I think members of the community will be scratching their heads and saying, what on earth are you doing? I hope that there is more success in uh, the local councils that are also discussing this tonight. Um, I will support the motion that's been put forward as amended, because at least it is um, moving us in terms of uh, supporting administration's continued delivery of programs and investigating new opportunities to actually look at what we can do to build climate resilience and look at greening in the city and so on. So I will support this substantive, but gee, it is disappointing that we didn't go further tonight because there was a great opportunity for us to do so, a historic opportunity that has been passed up and I cannot understand why. Sorry, Councillors. Um, Councillor Sims just summed up, so thank you. Um, so we'll go to the vote uh, for this substantive. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, Members. Can that be put the court of law now? Yes, it can. Thank you. Uh, so, members, we're back to the agenda now. Um, I will just say, members in the gallery, if you choose to leave, thank you for joining us this evening. So members, uh, we're going to item 12.1, which is the uh, Adelaide Parklands Authority nominations. Um, members, if I could just uh, take it to parts of course, first we'll do the procedural. So if I could actually have someone to uh, ask for Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder, Councillor Noel. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. Councillor Knoll. No members? If not, <coughs> to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Uh, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Um, now I'm going to do the, um, the second part in parts, but before I start, um, just a, a few um, introductory remarks. So obviously the Adelaide Parklands Authority is an advisory board to state and council. Um, in discussions with the minister, uh, we undertook to relook the composition of APLA. Um, he was uh, very supportive of minimising the state representatives um, to allow for more independent voices and also asked if we could consider as well uh, the members that we may want to put in accordance with uh, section six of the act which is basically looking for expert advice uh, so ultimately it's up to the members um, and i will go through this in parts and i would like to uh, for the first one to call for nominations uh, the first nomination though is um, jessica if i could take 1.1 as uh, Jessica Davies home as the Ghana Community Representative. Could we see the whole motion, Lord Mayor, just So, so Lord Mayor, you'll go through this one by one, seeking endorsement without any debate uh, related to the motion as a whole, and then you'll go to the next one and the next one. So th there's no debate of the proposal? So we actually just passed the proposal as a whole, as the procedural, and I'm now going to nominations. 
I beg your pardon. I didn't understand that's what you were doing. That, that's what I was doing. So we passed the recommendation and now I'm going to the nominations. Um, okay. Um, so the first nomination, um, uh, 1.1, is Jessica davis Hone as the Ghana Community Representative. Um, thank you. That is nominated by Councillor Abraham Zadeh. And I look for a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, did you wish to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members? No, if not, I'll go to Councillor Abraham Zadeh to sum up. Uh, Councillors, are those in favour? Those against? Councillor Martin, are you voting? Um, I'm still confused, Lord Mayor. I'm trying, I'm trying to understand, and indeed I was having the conversation with Councillor Sims. You are proposing that each of these appointments is dealt with separately and the opportunity to speak about the motion as a whole has passed. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. So the first one was the recommendation, which is the procedural in terms of the noting and supporting. So, so first is noting, the second one supporting the Minister for Planning's nominations, which we voted on, which was passed. Yes. And now I'm going to the nominations. Well, um, what we haven't had an opportunity. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Lord Mayor. What we haven't had an opportunity to do is to address the question of whether we're going to be appointing external members, um, or whether we're going to be having the opportunity to consider nominations from council. Will uh, there be an opportunity? Councillor Sims, I will. I was going to deal with that in 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Okay, I think that's the point that Councillor Martin's trying to make. It would be good to have an opportunity to comment on that. No, no, I think I, I do understand what's going on, Lord Mayor. Um, what has happened is that you are simply proposing the appointments and there's no opportunity to discuss the substantial changes that have occurred as a consequence of the Minister's um, request to you. That is correct, is it not? Um, councillors, I put the recommendation through, which was voted on. By members, if you wish to speak to the appointments, now is your opportunity. There are four appointments to be made. The first one that is a, the nomination that has come through is Jessica, and then there's three other nominations that we need to speak to. If you don't want to vote for Jessica, this is your opportunity. No, I th the point that I'm making, Lord Mayor, is that procedurally, um, this represents a significant departure from practice. So we have skipped over whether or not we agree with the significant departure from practice, and then we're being invited to appoint the people. That um, procedurally- You can discuss that, uh, Councillor, well, as the nominations are made. This is your opportunity to discuss this now. But Lord Mayor, if I get up and say to you, look, I don't agree with this process, um, I anticipate you'll say to me, uh, Councillor, we are dealing with a specific appointment here, not with the broad argument, which is what you're dealing with. I'll take some advice on that. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, I think you've made it quite clear that you, you put forward the substantive in the in the first place. That was voted on very clearly, been dealt with. Um, the only other opportunity that I can see right here from a process point of view is to deal with each individual appointee as you go through, as has been explained. I don't see any other, any other way through that. I believe through that process there's the opportunity for you to for you to explain your position. So am I to understand that your advice, Lord Mayor, is that you will entertain somebody speaking about the principle of what's being proposed rather than the individual appointments when it comes to individual appointments? Councillor Martin, I am now speaking to the nominations for the four positions of council, at which point, if you would like to speak about the nominations, you may. Broadly. Broadly, as Thank broadly you. as you like, Councillor Martin. That's but exactly I am the point now of... speaking to the four persons to be nominated to the authority for that procedure, Councillor Murray. Thank you. I've just got a question too. If the, the advice, the request from the government that we match um, their essentials, what not quite the same, was only a request, wasn't it? That, that's not in this motion. Um, we could, if we liked, um, nominate three councillors as well as yourself if we wanted to 
There's I think that is correct, Councillor yes. Moran. It is actually it's a, a request yeah. for us to consider the to consider. makeup we don't have of to. the APA yeah. and who we would like to nominate. Yeah. Um, given that there has is an opportunity for us to look at the makeup of the authority um, if we wanted to. in accordance yeah. with the Act and Section Six, so that we look at expert advice in the same way we did CAP. Yes, so that's only a, a, only a suggestion from the government. That's when um, Councillor Martin says big change. The only real change is that one of our positions has been replaced by a Ghana person. If that's successful, yes, and and if the other nom nominations are successful, so we have to go through the because yes, on the thirty first of March all APLA. Um, it's not mandated. It's not we mandated. Can only pick yeah. one council. It has not mandated. Right. Okay. Um, it was an opportunity for us to relook at the membership of APLA um, with a view that we bring in expert advice to um, give advice to council and to state. Councillor Martin. Lord, Lord Mayor, in that case, I'd like to propose an amendment uh, to the uh, motion that's on the board. So we can't do an amendment, Councillor Martin. My advice is that we can't do an amendment because we've already voted on it and passed it. You can, uh, we are I, looking at the four nominations. I, I understand that, but at, there's no, uh, no impediment to an amendment at the end of this, um, uh, if you would prefer it that way, noting that the council has received a request from the minister to remove all but two elected representatives from the Adelaide Parklands Authority. No, but there's no reason why they can't go down. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Moran is correct, it's, but the motion has been passed. So we are now at the point where we nominate the four representatives. So you can make your point through the nomination of the four representatives, but we have already passed the motion, so we can't take an amendment. Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, can I nominate someone? Uh, please. I, I think we have to vote on 1.1, which is the Ghana representative first, um, which I think we summed up and we we're about to vote on that. So, members, thank you, Councillor Moran. If I could ask members to vote on the Ghana representation. Thank you, members. All in favour, great. That is carried. So, we have appointed Jessica. There are three further nominations to the APLA authority. So I will ask members to nominate. Um, there were some, on, on um, number 16, there are some suggestions for nominations and buyers attached. Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, can I nominate uh, Councillor Hyde? You may. Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Are there any further nominations? Councillor Carroll. Nominate Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you accept the nomination? Um, thank you, Chief Councillor Moran. Does are there any further nominations? Councillor Habriam, is there? So um, that list that's come through, are we able to nominate from that list as well? Correct. Sorry, just a point of order. I'm confused. Are you only dealing with one nomination of 1.2? Correct. Three nominations. Um, it's up to members. We can do the three nominations at once, or we can do one at a time. You're accepting multiple nominations for one for one. That's well. That's the question that we haven't resolved. Is, uh, we haven't even resolved. Have we? No. <laughs> so my councillors, um, by voting on the recommendation, which was voted on in originally then you have actually approved the recommendation that has come through. So what we have to do now is nominate the four. I can actually do them one at a time, or if you would like, we can do the three final nominations at once, and we can take all the nominations and then do a ballot. If members are happy with that, rather than do you know, 1.2 and then 1.3, we're looking for the three other members for the APLA authority and I'm seeking nominations. Is, are members happy for us to do all three at once? Can I just yeah. clarify a little bit, just as a point of order. So when we're receiving numerous uh, nominations from um, 
councillor, a full prom councillors, we're just going to be electing one of those. So we've had a nomination from Councillor Moran, we've had a nomination from Councillor Hyde. Does that mean that only one of those will be successful? No, what I'm suggesting, oh, Councillor, what I'm suggesting is that we do the three. So we're, we're doing the three final nominations to the board. Okay, all right, thank you. So then, if you want to have three councillors, do you just put down your own three councillors? Thank you, Councillor Moran. But hang, but hang on, Lord If the councillors are nominated and accept the nomination, then they have a conflict of interest because this is a paid role and they're required to leave. And therefore. Um, when, when we go to the vote, that is correct. When we go to the vote. Mm -hmm. So by nominating Councillor Hyde, Councillor Moran... I'm going to ask, ask governance to answer that question. Sorry, through the Lord Mayor, the only time you actually have a conflict is when it comes down to the mover and second of voting for those three positions after the ballot has been taken. So to confirm those three positions is the time the conflict... is the only time there is a conflict. And the, and the debate the normal on that process process we do for, for any the same um, a, a appointment. So, members, I am looking for any further nominations. There are three positions. They can either be the councillors or they can be the list that was in the paper. Councillor Sims. I nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? I do, and I nominate Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims, do you accept the nomination? I do. Councillor Abridin, sorry. Um, well, then in that case, um, can I just um, recap on the original nomination? So, Councillor Hyde, uh, but also going off that list, can I nominate uh, Alison and Matt? Uh, if I could have the full names, please, Councillor. Oh, yes. Uh, so, it's Matt Davis and Alison Bretons. Uh, Matt Davis and Alison. Oh, glasses. Oh, I can't see. Alison Bretons. Members, any further nominations, Councillor Sims? I nominate Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira, do you accept the nomination? No. no. Thank you, Councillor Kira. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Moran. I nominate, uh, so could you just remind me who we nominated? So, so far we have we've nominated Councillor Hyde, Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims, Matt Davis and Alison Bretons. Okay, I nominate Lucy Sutherland and Sharon McCarthy and Sarah Sutter. And Sarah. Okay, thank you Councillor. Members, are there any other nominations? I nominate Sophie Thompson, Lord Mayor. Isn't she on Game of Thrones? <laughs> Sorry, no, that's the one on television. <laughs> Sorry, that nomination has not been accepted, Councillor Martin. Why is that? Um, I've just been told it's not accepted. It's on the list. No, she's not. Um, Sarah Sutter is on the list, which uh, Councillor Moran just nominated. No, she was on the list. Sorry, she's on the attachment, Councillor. I'm just I'm just clarifying with them. Um, she is there. Abby. Um, yes, she is there. She's a horticulture expert and she's on the list. I'm not sure why she's not in the report. Okay, thank you. And I'd also like to nominate Craig Wilkins. Uh, Craig Wilkins has been appointed by the Minister. Oh, well, that's a good thing to Is that one of our 
I'll just get some advice on that one, Councillor Murray. Um, Councillor, we haven't found out whether Roger would accept or not. We haven't. We don't know whether Roger would accept or not, so we can't accept. Well, he does. He's indicated that to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll, just one moment. So, do you do, has um, Roger told? Just got something in writing, like I did from Helen. I need something in writing that actually says that he accepts the nomination, um, which is what I did with uh, Councillor Donovan, just to make sure that she accepted the nomination. So I won't accept that nomination. Okay, um, councillors, the ballot form is being done and will be distributed in a moment, and then we will ask you to vote for three. No, you don't leave the room, councillor. We do the ballot. You vote. You can all vote because there's no conflict of interest. Uh, in, until you're actually nominated and voted on, if that makes sense. There's no conflict of interest for you to vote. You can all vote for three, three members. And once those three come through the ballot, then we will vote on who's come through the ballot. So, Lord Mayor, uh, and I'm sorry to be asking so many questions, but it's a very puzzling I think process. you're just having fun, Councillor, and that's no. fine. I'm quite happy to keep going. No. So what we're doing is... A I thought we were doing Game of Thrones before, but this is actually becoming more of a comedy no, no, sketch. I, so. Look, I'm just trying to ascertain if it's like the locals. The winners are announced and then everyone endorses the winners. No, once we've done the ballot, we will come up with three, the three nominations that, and then we will vote on those three nominations. If there are councillors in those final three nominations, then those councillors will be asked to leave the room as per usual procedure and councillor on surprise, this is year five you've been here, that actually, that, that's actually how we always do it. So you will now get a nomination form. You only put a cross next to three, three of the nominations, please. Otherwise it will be disqualified. We will then collect those ballots. We will then count the ballots and we will say who the top three are that have been nominated by the chamber. We will then vote on those three. And if either or any of you that have been nominated are in those top three, you will be asked to leave the chamber. Am I clear, members? Yes. Thank you. We will now go to the ballot. So it's like Which comedy show was that? <laughs> I actually think that we should we should talk to Foxtel and just stream it, don't you think? Straight to Foxtel. They're looking for programming at the moment. Deputy Lord Mayor. I believe um, Secretary is going to take a while to finish this. Can we lay this matter on the table and pick it up in 10, 15 minutes and do all the other items? Uh, no, no, I've been told. <laughs> Sorry, to um, lay a motion... Uh, Lay a matter on the table. The only way you can lift it is by having a motion on notice to lift it from. Oh, okay. So oh. just wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Uh, members, I might suggest that we have a. No, they're there. They're there. So, members, once we've done the, the ballot papers going out, when they've been collected, we'll take a short five minute break while they count the ballot. So, um, and then we'll come back. So, uh, you have to vote first. Do not leave the chamber, Councillor Karen. <laughs> so eager. Members, there are, I believe, 10 nominees for the three positions of the Apple board. Therefore, a secret ballot will be, will be held. The nominees are Councillor Hyde, 
Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Lucy Sutherland, Matt Davis, Sharon McKay, Alison Bretones, Sarah Sutter and Sophie Thompson. Please mark only three in the box, you know, we will have a uh, five minute recess. Are we taking a break now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Um, members, the su successful nominees are Councillor Hyde, uh, Matt Davis and Alison Breton, and I've just taken advice. Um, I'd also like to propose that Councillor Moran is our um, proxy. So if I could ask someone to move those nominations. Sorry, I don't understand. Please don't. It's a motion. So the successful nominees for the three positions are Councillor Hyde, Matt Davis and Alison Breton. I just have checked that we can have a proxy for our council representative and the next one on the... Yes, for our council position is Councillor Moran. And so I would ask that we please vote for Councillor Hyde, Matt Davis, and uh, I need a motion, and Alison Breton with Councillor Moran's proxy. If I could have someone pass that motion. Yeah, and you can, we'll just wait till we vote, Councillor <laughs> Hyde. Uh, Councillor Abraham Zadu, and a seconder, please, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I uh, will ask Councillor Moran, Councillor Hyde, to please uh, leave the room for a moment. Thank you, members. Uh, so I'll now ask if anybody wants to speak to the motion. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I don't uh, support this. I think this is a, a disappointing course of action that the council is taking. In fact, I think this is probably the first time in the history of this council that we've actually willingly given up council representation on a body such as this. And I just find it a really, really curious um, state of affairs. Um, you know, my concern with the parklands is that giving the government control of the parklands is like giving Count Dracula the keys to the blood bank. You know, once they sink their teeth in, we can't control what they do. And APLA has always played an important role in providing advice to a council. It's our body, it's funded by us, provide advice to the council and to the government on what should happen in um, the parklands. And I cannot understand why this council would willingly give away the influence that we have had um, through that body. We have a responsibility to our ratepayers to ensure that um, we're reflecting their concerns through APLA. Um, but also, we've been recognised as long-term custodians of the parklands. We have our obligations under the uh, Parklands Act. And um, I find it really, really curious that we would give this away. And I also find it quite curious that we would be contemplating replacing Councillor Moran, who has been on APLA since its inception, with a first-term councillor who has been there for less than six months. It's a very, very curious state of affairs. Councillor Martin. Uh, sorry, Councillor. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Canon. Yeah, I didn't see. Um, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, for what I want to read from the appointments from the from the minister, uh, they are a cross section of people that are specialists in this area, and I think the attempt to uh, depoliticise uh, the advice. Let's face it, this is advice. Um, it's certainly a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, change. Uh, to the previous you know, arrangements between council and government, and I think this is certainly a step forward about giving us some, you know, some re something reasonable and uh, certainly factual that we can work with when we get uh, issues that come up in the, in the parklands. And I think this is certainly a step forward because the, at the end of the day, we want we want good, balanced uh, outcomes, and that is from getting advice that is not in a political nature, but certainly far more about the actual parklands and what it can, what it is there for us. Thank you. Um, I, I will just note for the record that the term is from the 1st of April to the 31st of December and it will come back to Council in terms of nominations for those uh, positions. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm sorry, Councillor Martin. 31st of December. 31st of December, 2020. 2020. 2020. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, I'm happy to speak up. Um, Lord Mayor, just to, um, just to be on the record, um, I think as we've heard before, this is an advisory body to Council. We have every opportunity through the Chamber 
to make recommendations to APLA, to also be able to opportunities to amend any of the recommendations, agree, disagree with APLA's position. It would be good to have representatives on there from industry that could make us get us to think outside the square and think outside the parklands and the things that we can achieve in that space because I think there's an incredible opportunity for us there. Um, I think I would argue with Council Hyde being on there as well is an element of also connecting our younger generation with the parklands and making them more passionate and more involved in the parkland story which is also important and like I said there'll be an opportunity for us as a council to be able to do that. The other thing that I want to comment on this is an opportunity where the government's put all its swords down and come to council and said, look, what we want to do is make this a bit more representative of industry and to bring the professionals on board. Are you prepared to do that? What we've done is reciprocate that. I think through this opportunity, we're going to have uh, a discussion with the government where we'll be able to talk about parklands funding. Uh, and let's face it, we keep talking about that we are the custodians of the parklands, we're the cleaners of the parklands, we're the maintainers of the parklands. Because every time the government wants to put its hands on the parkland, it has done so at every single uh, step of the way and every single occasion. So I want to be able to have as a council a mature conversation with the state government that says, why don't we protect the parklands for South Australia indefinitely, because we think that's very important. And if we're both going to do that, why don't we go through a co-funding arrangement that could potentially save our ratepayers millions and millions and millions over the coming years in rates where we could provide rate incentives, invest back in our city and do a lot of things that we're not currently doing. I agree that the state government, although they're putting in their five million, I believe every second year or uh, Last year it was just over 11 million and 11. this year it's been just over five so far. So if we're able to concrete in place two things with the state government, a protection of the parklands of the state legislation and act, and the second thing is a co-funding arrangement with the state government on parklands maintenance and improvements, then we're going to walk out with this, and I think our road pays will also walk out with this. And that's what the opportunity I'm looking for to have a chat with the state government about. Uh, other members, sorry, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor. I, I, look, I, I too am just, um, well, frankly, dismayed about this decision. Um, I, I hear the speakers. I, I understand that Councillor Canole would feel the way he does. It is the decision of his son. However, Councillor his Martin, son, point of no, order. No, no, that no, no, no. has been asked and answered, and that is not for this chamber. Thank you. Well, Lord Mayor, I'm sorry, but it is an issue when I'm standing here and about to tell you that the minister is full of bluff and political spin. That was what I was about to say. I was also about to say, with apologies to Councillor Canal for being rude about his son. Now, is that reasonable? Continue, Councillor Martin. You, I think Mayor. your point has been well and truly made. I, I understand that position. I do not understand your position. I do not understand Councillor Abbott's position. This, this motion, this process, has nothing to do with Parklands funding. And the misleading information about how the government put in $11 million last year and $5 million the year before, it's done nothing of the sort. We have maintained the parklands year in, year out, since the parklands were there from the 1800s. The government came up with $20 million as an election promise in 2014 on projects of its choosing in the parklands as an election start. Nothing to do with funding nor has this anything to do with funding. This is about agreeing to the bluff of the minister who has said to us, I want you to get rid of councillor representatives on the board of the authority, and I want them replaced with people who are not going to represent the views of the city of Adelaide. That is to say, the minister is seeking to stack the board. Now, Lord Mayor, I, don't, I, I see you shaking your head but that is the reality. Now, the problem with all of this is the timing of it. It is critical. At this time, I, I read in newspapers that the Aquatic Centre is to somehow be replaced with a Adelaide Crows headquarters. We have an Adelaide Oval Hotel going ahead. There is talk of soccer putting a stadium on the parklands of the golf course. There is talk of the golf course even being subject to some secret plan and some development that no one knows anything about. Now, in most of these matters, in most of these matters, it is the council members 
as representatives of the ratepayers, as landlords who will exercise decisions on these matters, not only in council, but on APWA. It is the council members who understand the Local Government Act, their responsibilities, and the aspirations of council. They are being removed, and we are rolling over like a puppy falling to the ground, excitedly looking for a pat on the belly from the minister, we are rolling over. This will be regretted for decades to come. Councillor Martin. And just in response, because you are actually talking to me directly, um, you yourself nominated Craig Wilkins. Uh, I believe you're supportive of Stephanie Johnston, who has a, who is an APA member and is on there. Uh, ben oh, Wilsmore. The government representative. Sorry? They're the government representatives, Lord me. Yes, I know. You're just saying that you stake the board, but you stake the board with people that you nominated. No, so, yeah. And sorry, I'm speaking now. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if this was a conversation, we have not been demanded. We have not been directed. We have been given an opportunity to put in an expert uh, membership in terms of the advice that we get from APA. APA. And that all decisions still come through council. And again, this is uh, for a period from the 1st of April 2019 to the 31st of December 2020. Uh, the names have been put forward by the council chamber, including yourself uh, with several of those and including Councillor Moran, and they've been voted on. So- Well, Lord Mayor, it's a secret ballot, so I don't know how you know how I voted. And in the second- no, I didn't say I knew how you voted. No, I, no, said that um, I was talking about the nominations that we then voted. You're accusing me of something I didn't do. No, we I'm have, not accusing you. We have not come to the second matter that involves the election of the people you referred to, including Stephanie Johnson. We have not come to that. We are still dealing with the first matter. And uh, we the have, because that went through in the first motion where we supported the Minister of Planning's nominees to the board, and that went through with our first motion. No, that's, that's our next... That's our next consideration by point. Thank you. Members, I will go back to the business at oh, hand. Would no, anybody no, else no, like no, to no, speak no, to no. the nominations? Councillor Abraham, sir. Just a uh, quick. Are you, oh, oh, yes, I'll, just, I'll, wait, I'll wait to sum up. Thank you. Uh, members? No, if not, I'll go to Councillor. Thank you for summing up. Um, just very quickly, Lord Mayor, I think you said it perfectly. This is a panel of experts, and that's um, what we need here. We need those experts to give us their advice. And it is an advisory council. They come, they come to us with advice, and we decide whether to defer that advice is to be taken on board or not. But also, um, we are not losing the uh, voice of the community. We have a very loud voice, a very energetic voice, and a very confident voice in uh, Council Hyde. Members, uh, so you have the nominations before you. If I could ask, this is 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4. If I could ask you to vote those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, could we ask the councillors Moran and Hyde back into the room? Thank you. Councillors, thank you. Uh, and that has been passed, councillors. We are now going to 12.2, which is the appointment of the Traders Advisory Group Chair to the Adelaide Central Market Authority. And I look for someone to pass it. Thank you, Council uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, and the seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, any discussion? Not. I'll go back to the move to sum up, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Sims, did you Sorry, want? I'm in favour. Thank you. Uh, that is carried. Uh, item 12.3 is uh, the appointment of board members to the Rundle Mall Management Authority. A mover, Councillor Moran. A seconder? Members, seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to? No, I don't. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Members, if not, Councillor Moran to sum up. Sum up. Thank you, Councillor. Um, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, we go to 12.4, which is the quarterly forward uh, procurement report Q4. Councillor Martin, 
Are you moving as printed? Or? No, I'm proposing a variation, Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, right? Yes, it's at, um, as printed. Um, at one, um, and after the date, and asks the administration to provide a briefing on the precise services it seeks under the proposed tender, comma. together with an opportunity a briefing on um, the pro precise services it seeks under the tender comma together with an opportunity for previously adopted elected member motions related to waste services to be debated. Um, Councillor, I'll seek a seconder. Thank you. Um, uh, thank think... you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, there is a provision uh, detailed at four in the discussion paper and at other places for members to ask for items to be called in. And I have no doubt that before the tender is awarded, the CEO would bring to us uh, any potential tenders. However, uh, members would remember that Councillor Abbott and Councillor Donovan before that and I and the previous term of council and other councillors previously have raised concerns about the nature of the waste collection services that we provide. Um, before the tender goes out in QF4 next month um, for services to be provided for the next 10 years, according to the paper, um, I'm suggesting as an elected body that we should have the opportunity to discuss what it is in the nature of the services that we want to provide to our rate payers. And this would then inform the tender process. Um, and uh, for my part, I want equal rights for ratepayers. That is to say, I want businesses to have the same services that residents has in terms of red bins, green bins, yellow bins. And at this time, only some businesses get that service. Um, now, I'm suggesting that the newer businesses are missing out on this service. And so we have a situation where our contractors go down the street and then they collect from one business, they skip three, they collect from two, they skip five, and then they do another one. That is the current circumstance. Whereas in residential areas, they collect all bins. Um, it's not equitable for businesses. And Lord Mayor, it, it is not equitable for residents as well. And I remember that during the election campaign, you made a promise that you would uh, investigate rubbish services for all residents, particularly those in high-rise buildings. Now, this um, is clearly what the intention of this motion is. And additionally, I, I would like to put on uh, the discussion table for this tender public realm services, because we have this circumstance in the city of Adelaide where um, we, we preach to our, uh, our ratepayers that we want them to separate rubbish. We want you know landfill in the red bin, we want recyclables in the yellow, and we want green uh, bins to contain nothing but organic waste. And yet in the public realm, we have one container and we say, throw it all in, don't recycle, throw it all in, we're gonna send it off to landfill. Now that clearly needs addressing. And the time to do that is at this point in time. So I'm asking for a workshop before that tender goes out, and, and I know that the CEO will be happy to provide that, but it would give us an opportunity to discuss Councillor Abbott's motion, Councillor Donovan's motion, your motion, and all of the other matters in relation to that tender process. I'll just ask the CEO to comment. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yes, through the Lord Mayor, fully understand the intent and appreciate it. I'll just ask Steve to make a comment. Thanks. Um, through the Chair, um, just quickly, if I could clarify, Councillor, the 
process at the moment is that this is under the council solutions um, procurement. It is actually in market at the moment and council as the attachment um, identifies is currently under evaluation and the city of Adelaide has reserved the right to determine its involvement in each service. So I just wanted to clarify it is in market currently and we will, we will subscribe or not based on council's decision. Uh, look, I, I, um, I didn't realise it was currently under evaluation, but certainly before any uh, a contract is entered into for the next 10 years, uh, I believe that we all should have a say about what's in that tender and that might, as you suggest, uh, have implications for the, uh, the, the combined contract. Three, three, it goes without saying that it was fully intended that we would be briefing, so I agree with that. Uh, Councillor Moran, did you wish to no, speak? Thank you. Um, members, not go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. So we'll just vote on the turn of motion. Um, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. We go to uh, 12.5, which is the election of. Um, Garrett representatives. Now, again, first I'm going to do the procedural. So if I could actually ask someone please to pass the motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran, which is procedural. Uh, a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Moran, uh, oh, did you wish to speak to members? No, Councillor Knoll, no. Uh, Councillor Moran, back to you to sum up. Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that's carried. We'll now go to the nominations. Now, just before we go to the nominations, uh, the current membership uh, of the uh, Garrick is uh, myself. Uh, it's chaired by Mayor Redman, who's from Gawler. There is Councillor Aldridge from Salisbury, Mayor Knight from, oh, sorry, Mayor Aldridge from Salisbury, Mayor Knight from Tea Tree Gully, uh, Councillor Mex from Norwood St. Peter's, Mayor Lachlan from Prospect and Councillor Wisdom from Adelaide Hills. Uh, uh, so we have two men and five women on Garrick um, and they are predominantly from the northern suburbs. So I would uh, suggest that if members would like to put uh, some uh, two names forwards or more than two candidates if we need to go to the vote. Um, uh, that we think both of our gender equity and also of the areas that we are covering for Garrick. Would any members like to nominate, make a nomination? Uh, we do need two nominations. We need two. Councillor Don Palmer. Thank you. Councillor Don Palmer, who is 2.8 from the City of Unley. Any further nominations? Councillor Martin? Angela Evans. Uh, Mayor Angela Evans from the City of Charles Sturt. Are there any further nominations? If not, councillors, our two uh, nominations or two candidates to be nominated would be Councillor Angela Evans and Councillor, oh sorry, Mayor. Angela Evans from the City of Charles Sturt and Councillor Don Palmer from the City of Unley. Could I have someone move that motion? Move those nominations. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Councillor Canole. Uh, Councillor Moran? <laughs> Any discussion, members? If not, uh, summed up. Thank you. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to 12.6, which is uh, to approve the nomination of a council staff member. Again, I have to do a procedural uh, for the uh, recommendation and then we'll go to the nomination. If I could have someone move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Sims. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, did you wish to speak to him? Councillor Sims. Any discussion? Councillor Martin? Are you going to call for nominations? I am. I'm going to do the procedural first. Uh, if there's any discussion on the procedural, I'll go to Councillor Abraham to sum up. Sum up. Uh, members, those in favour? 
As again, so that's carried. I will now call for nomination. It could be a councillor or a staff member. Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Donovan. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Councillor Martin. And again, I did ask Councillor Donovan uh, to text me if she would accept nomination should she be nominated, and she has. Councillor Abbott. Uh, Lord Mayor, can I nominate uh, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Hall? Councillor Kouros and Councillor Ho. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Uh, Councillor Ho, do you accept the nomination? Um, so we have three other in for the nominations. No, if not, we actually go to a ballot. So, members, the nomination goes to the LGA, and the LGA will decide who then uh, is, becomes the board member. Um, there are three nominees, which is Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Ho. Uh, on your piece of paper, if you could mark just one councillor, please. Uh, one cross next to either of these three, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kouros or Councillor Ho. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, so members, uh, Councillor Donovan is the nominated nomination of council. Um, if I can have someone move, Councillor Donovan, thank you. Oh, they're all not. I can't, can't see that quickly. Sorry, I can slowly. Could I have someone move? Thank Councillor Martin and second her. Uh, Councillor Knoll. If anybody wants to speak to that, if not, Councillor Martin. Oh, just delighted. Delighted. Is, was that you summing up? Yes, Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, so we have uh, item 12.7 progress of motions by elected members. Councillor Martin and seconder. Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Yes, look, I just wanted to thank the administration uh, for preparing this report. Um, I did read it. Um, I, I do want to tell them I did read it. Um, and it was good to understand where motions are. It was a wonderful walk down memory lane. I remember some of those motions. And as a consequence, Lord Mayor, I want to send birthday greetings to Councillor Sims. It is three years ago this week that his motion for a report on sustainable procurement was adopted by a council. Congratulations. I'll bring it Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Sims. Did you wish to speak to the motion? I thank uh, Councillor Martin for the um, birthday greetings. I had hoped um, that uh, a councillor would jump out of a cake um, for me in the meeting tonight. It hasn't <laughs> happened, but I- Councillor Donovan's missing. The night is still young. <laughs> Um, but I appreciate the reminder um, about um, motions that are, um, that are, are still um, still waiting to be actioned, and um, I look forward to being able to um, bring some of those back from the dead at future meetings. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, other members wish to speak to the no councillor Martin to sum up. Sum up, Thank you, members. Those in favour? Members. I know it's long in the evening. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That's carried. Uh, we have no questions on the notice. Members, do we have any questions without notice? No, we go to item 15, motions on notice. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Do we have a seconder? I have a seconder. Uh, you have to present the motion first. Oh, yes. I have a seconder. Sorry, I haven't done this for two weeks. Um, I, I would look, like to move the motion in the terms that it appears on the agenda. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Moran. Would you like to speak to the motion? I would indeed. I can find which bit of paper it was. Um, I'll, I'll keep this brief. Uh, because I know there's broad support in the chamber for this, um, uh, which I welcome because it, it's common sense, broadly. Um, we know we know what the state uh, King William Street North is, um, where of course we have no right terms there, and the inconvenience that that causes. Um, so I was quite shocked to find out that it had been proposed that we would be getting rid of right hand turns and limiting accessibility uh, along the entirety of that corridor, essentially cutting the city in half. Um, and of course, uh, as, a, as a byproduct of that, uh, and particularly as a byproduct of making it a tram only lane, um, we would also be losing, I think it says roughly 40% of the car parks along King William Street there. Um, so that, that it, seems, it seems to me um, that there is uh, this push by Dipti to do what they did along North Terrace, um, where they have what is essentially, uh, as someone put it to me, they like to go and build the Taj Mahal. Their design options are uh, very big. They take up a lot of space. Um, while broadly speaking, of course, we're all supportive of the tram line um, uh, being redone. It's the oldest part of the line. It needs to be redone. And in particular, we welcome finally uh, the creation of DDA compliant stops along there, um, not just uh, for disability access to those stops, but also uh, to increase and, and to benefit the passenger numbers that use those stops um, more generally in that part of the city. Uh, but it's about doing it the right way. We need to do it do it right the first time, particularly when we're spending, or when the state government is spending this quantum of money. Um, uh, so if I can, uh, in, in uh, just summarising, I suppose, um, uh, note that, that well, this motion says that we are pro accessibility in the city, um, and that's not just for cars. Of course, this builds on uh, part of the motion I had last week talking about uh, 
cycling options um, along that along that stretch of road as well. Um, uh, we're pro accessibility, we're pro business, and we really just want our ratepayers to be heard and our residents to be heard. Of course, it was noted earlier earlier today um, uh, in the media that uh, PTP Alliance had denied multiple requests. Um, to share the results of the consultation. Um, I understand uh, I've requested from administration that we try and get hold of that and assess it as well. Um, and to date, to date, we've seen nothing. So um, uh, I do think it is it is good that the that the new state government one is investing in infrastructure so thoroughly, and they've budgeted more money than the previous government had for this project. Um, but two, that they undertake as a matter of policy, Dipti now undertakes a consultation any time it goes and does something. Uh, like this. Now that is of course a step in the right direction, um, but we then need to take on board that feedback from the consultation. Um, and so this motion is essentially ensuring that the state government is loud and clear, and not just not just through bureaucratic back channels, um, but through the media, what we expect. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, after tonight's meeting, I'm not sure that the uh, absence of right turns is the key challenge facing this council. There's been lots of right turns. Um, I do keep trying to argue against them. I've not had any success yet. Look, um, in terms of um, this uh, motion, I must say I'm not supportive of this. It does strike me as quite odd that the state government would finally do what we've been asking them to do. You know, this council, um, Councillor Martin reminded us of uh, memory lane earlier. You know, I, um, I remember when I was on council previously, the local community in the southwest in particular were very strong advocates around wanting to deal with um, the uh, tram in that area. And the tram stops, there were a range of issues that were raised, safety of course being first and foremost. Um, and to me, for us to be taking this position seems quite churlish, particularly when the government have stated that to do what Councillor Hyde is suggesting would potentially reduce um, the biking at uh, the bike paths um, at a time when we're actually advocating for more bike infrastructure along that corridor. Um, and also, we have had a series of opportunities to give feedback to the government on the direction they're taking. And so to pass a motion in this way when this process is already in train, I think is quite odd. Um, you know, I'm, as you know, uh, Lord Mayor, certainly not one who shies away from criticising the government when I think they're doing the wrong thing. But when they're actually willing to expend a large amount of money on a key infrastructure project in the city of Adelaide that we've been calling for, then um, I think we should be saying thank you very much. Um, let's make a few improvements along the way. But something such as this, which uh, you know would actually undermine the project, I think is the, the wrong way for us to go. I think we do have to get away from focusing just on car parking within this city council. And I understand, you know, car parking is obviously an issue of consideration, but you know, we've got to have a vision that's bigger than a car park here in the city of Adelaide, and actually improving um, the uh, the tram um, rollout in the city is going to bring more people into the city. It's going to encourage more people to use the tram, and I don't think we should go down this path. So I won't be supporting it, and I encourage um, others to uh, join me in taking this position. Uh, thank you, councillors. Councillor Knoll, then Councillor Martin. Um, I am uh, in support of this particular motion, and it is something that I've been expressing the entire time, including the uh, the, the one opportunity we had at, at work, uh, working with the administration from DPT on how they were going to roll this out. The simple fact is, is that the, the motions we've been putting through uh, in these last, the last fortnight were all about opening up the city. So we take that as an opportunity to send a message to the wider community. One, we are going to we appreciate the, the improvement in the infrastructure that's, a, that's coming. Uh, the, the question is, how are we rolling it out? So quite simply, uh, saying we're going to take away the right-hand turns, etc., as it was shown in the media, is telling people that we're closing the city up. And, it's, and again, it uh, aids in the discouragement of people using the city as the destination, which is my, my entire premise of why I'm here on council, is that I want us to be the hub for the entire city. Uh, and it is important that we send that message, but also we don't know what the future transport needs are and it may not be parking and I'm sure it won't be over the longer term in any major way, but we still need to leave our options open 
so that that transport we do have has an opportunity to uh, go either way around the, uh, King William Street, but also it does not discourage uh, the development of either side. So it is much more about one, messaging to uh, the wider community that the city is open and we're uh, uh, flexible. Two, that we do not stifle the ability for our city to evolve into the various components, the various precincts, and that we uh, are certainly trying to draw people into the city. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Marshall. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, it's late, and um, I did read in the advertising this morning that Team Adelaide is going to support this, so there's not much point in speaking. However, having said that, um, I, I, uh, I thank uh, Councillor Hyde for the motion. It's a great gesture, um, but it is not much more because, as we all know, Minister Canol and Dipti can do whatever they like, and in this instance, they will proceed as planned. Um, I won't be supporting this either um, for some of the reasons uh, uh, mentioned by uh, Councillor Sims, but not least because there is a safety issue. There is a cost in all of this. Um, DIPTI's proposal is about not only streamlining uh, the operations of its own transport network, but about the safety of the public and uh, our uh, briefing, uh, which we all attended, by the way, DIPTI presented to all of us, included a chart which has been distributed to you, I understand, this evening as well, which shows that there were more than 200 near misses with uh, vehicles colliding with trams. There were something in the order of 15 car collisions. Um, there were 18 people who were hit by trams, uh, a couple of bicycles as well over a period um, uh, between 2008 and 2018. That is clearly one of the reasons Dipti said we need to act in this way, that is to prevent further collisions. And if members all remember, it was the near misses that produced a lot of the accidents. That is to say that people who were standing on the trams were injured as the trams braked to avoid vehicles. Now, I'm not prepared to pay the cost of uh, a possible deaths or possible injury. Um, Frankly, uh, if it's inconvenient, um, I think human lives, um, saving lives is probably more important. That would be my view. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillors, any other debate? Councillor Moran? If not, we also speak now. Look, I do agree with this motion, um, and I think we did say it to the representatives in the briefing that we weren't happy with the right-hand turn lanes. It wasn't really, like a lot of government briefings, it wasn't really a briefing. You get the engineers there, you can't really pull them to bits, can you? Um, they're not the politicians making the decision, blah, blah, blah. I seem to remember that the push from council, uh, what we wanted to do was get a compliant, DDA compliant um, tram stop. I don't think we ever envisaged um, and, and repaired the tram lines. We didn't ask for um, the northern one to be repeated in the south. Um, it is it has ruined this part of the street. There are no right hand turns. If you've got, you have to go right around um, Victoria Square. It keeps the I, I can see the other side too, but it does keep cars on the road longer. It makes a less, less efficient thoroughfare. I have to drive there every morning. Um, I was going to say to take the kids to school, to drive <laughs> the kids at work. Um, and it is a nightmare. Piri Street has been ruined by it. It was uh, mentioned to me, I think, by the media that um, that we're doing, they're basing it on the Melbourne experience, that you can drive on the tram tracks there, and they're finding that the traffic is really delaying the trams and fishes. But we're not Melbourne. You go to Melbourne, Melbourne's a freaking nightmare. You know, you're stuck in traffic on a su Sunday afternoon. It is chock-a-block. It's gridlocked with cars. I don't know why we ever say, look at Melbourne, isn't it fantastic for its transport system? It is not. The tram system, granted, is good. But the roads are terrible. <coughs> and if you notice that even with that way of thinking, Melbourne has not done its dedicated tram lines. It would rather have its trams going a little bit slower than the decrease of traffic flow, even more than it already is decreased. Uh, I, I think you could ask anybody which section of the tram line they prefer. And I don't know anybody that has, uh, hundreds of people have said to me, why can't we drive on the tram lines like they do south of Victoria Square? Why don't we drive on the tram lines like they do in Melbourne? Why don't we drive on the tram lines? They're empty most of the time. Um, so I do agree with Alex 
Um, I think it's a very good motion. Um, I think we did flag our dislike for it, but as I said, it wasn't the right venue. These were um, engineers, road designers, they're not the people you yell at. Um, and we never actually get to the people we yell at. France might, but not us. Um, we, uh, we should support this motion. It is clearly, it will kill some of the streets, kill some of the businesses in the streets that won't have right-hand turns down them, and it will flood other streets that do have right-hand turns that probably are resident, have residents in it with too much traffic. I think the clincher came with me when they said we couldn't turn down South, uh, South Terrace. What? So, yeah, I hope you support this motion. We said, clearly, I don't think we'll be listened to it, but at least we got on the record that we thought this was a bad idea. Councillors, Councillor Gross, did you wish to speak? I just would like to say that I agree with this motion. I think we've all expressed our views on that and that we all agree, um, most of us do agree, um, that uh, you know that we could um, change the rules and to have a right-hand turn. Um, I like the way, uh, well, I'm, I'm grateful for Councillor Hyde to bring this forward to make it, to present it to the um, Deputy to um, revisit it. If I do or not, it's another it's another story. Um, I really I do believe. I, I think uh, uh, Councillor Moran, I think it's great that you're supporting this. And uh, I uh, did I want to put motion there. Uh, <laughs> I do know that you uh, agree that this oh, is gosh. something that uh, should be considered. <laughs> Members, if there's no other speakers, I will go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll just make a couple of reflections and summing up. Um, the first one is I think we're conflating some issues here, or the speakers against are conflating some issues. Um, obviously, and I campaigned on it myself, we're all very much in favour of having a DDA compliance stop. It's something that we need, it's something that we needed uh, for years, and I applaud the government for doing that. Um, I don't expect that, uh, that this motion will have a negative impact on the delivery of that um, in the slightest. What, is, what it's doing is seeking to encourage the government to enhance their designs, um, not, to dis, not at the disadvantage um, uh, of any of the users of, um, of the stop. But um, furthermore as well, I think we're also conflating the issue of, you know, it was mentioned cars, focusing on cars, why do we focus on cars so much? Um, and, and certainly, some some members of this chamber want to want to get rid of cars or, or minimise their usage in the city, and 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 they have their reasons for doing that. But just limiting how how they can access and use the city is not not the way to do that at all. If you want to get rid of cars or reduce their usage, you might bring a motion about e-scooters or something or like that. Transport. Potentially, exactly. Um, uh, but you certainly don't. You certainly don't make it an issue of just of just barring their entry um, onto onto the city streets. I think that's very very poor policy and a very poor approach to take. Um, the the final thing I would say is that, uh, and I didn't mention it in in my original address, is that we need to have a discussion around what we are going to do with an expansion of the tram network in the city. And by that I mean, and I think I've said it um, in passing before. Uh, what are we going to do if a tram goes down Halifax Street? What are we going to do if a tram goes down O'Connell Street? Are we going to have a dedicated corridor? Are we going to have O'Connell Street down to one lane? Are we going to completely disallow cars from going down Halifax Street? Or are we going to rip up the median street again the second time this decade um, and, and take that sort of approach? So that is something I'm not satisfied Dipti has actually thought about. Um, and it's something we really do need to think hard about and talk to the community about what they want and what their expectations are, um, because I don't think it's feasible for us to have tram only corridors throughout the city. I do accept um, uh, that there is a risk there. I do accept that Adelaide drivers, particularly by virtue of the fact that that is the only shared corridor in the entirety of the state, uh, perhaps have not adjusted um, to having to do with the tram, um, and perhaps some drivers in the city are not considerate. I don't think, if we're going to expand the tram network and we probably will need to have shared corridors, I don't then think the answer is, is to cater for those bad drivers. I think, if anything, we need more education, we need more um, uh, safety features around the shared corridors if we're to go down that path. Um, uh, and so, look, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. I'm happy to discuss it further with, with other councillors, and I welcome administration thinking about that, that aspect of it as well um, in future. I commend the motion. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that
takes us to um, uh, item 15.3, which is Councillor Sims on his I nearly forgot about this one, Lord Mayor. Um, but I'm glad that um, uh, glad that um, I've now recalled what we're talking about and found the, the sheet of paper. Um, yes, Pine Street. Um, Lord, Lord Mayor, the um, motion uh, I move as printed. Thank you. <laughs> Second to Councillor Martin, please. Thank you. you. speak to the motion. Thank Thanks, Sorry, Lord, it's been a, um, a long night. Um, Look, uh, the motion that I'm um, putting forward here is pretty straightforward. Um, really, it is uh, just seeking to deal with the issue of paving on um, Hindley Street, in particular from Morford Street to King William Street. Um, it is in an unsatisfactory condition. Um, anybody who walks down Hindley Street would be aware of that. Um, and uh, it is in need of um, repair. Um, there are also a lot of issues on Hindley Street in terms of enforcement of uh, council regulations, um, particularly, as you would note in the motion, relating to outdoor dining, but also queuing on um, Hindley Street. At the moment, um, the outdoor dining regulations are not necessarily being enforced, and that's causing pedestrians to often have to walk on the street, um, and it's the same for queuing. We have quite long, excessive queues, particularly um, on Friday and Saturday nights. So this motion is really just asking for um, the administration to prepare some costings for um, the uh, Hindley Street pavers um, from Morford Street to King William, but also to get some costings done to look at the creation of a nighttime precinct officer to really enforce council regulations on Hindley Street at night. This is something that businesses uh, on Hindley Street have been advocating for for some time. Um, indeed, the West End City Association have raised this with me, and that's why I'm putting this forward, because I wanted to ensure that um, there was some work done looking at Hindley Street as part of the budget process, and I didn't want to see the um, West End of the city being left behind. So I really encourage councillors to support this motion. It is just an investigation. It's getting some costings done, um, but I think it would have a positive impact on um, this part of the city. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I'm just going to ask the CEO to comment on the nighttime precinct officer, if I may. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. We've, uh, administration has looked at surveillance of Piney Street in the past. I might ask Claire, are you able to just mention some of the work we're doing with um, surveillance of the area? Piney Street in particular. Um, thank you, Mark. Through the Lord Mayor. Um, yes, so we take regular audits um, during the evenings uh, from a safety and enforcement perspective. Um, so that work's been ongoing. I think we have a um, audit on compliance issues coming up very shortly. Um, in terms of um, surveillance, we've also started to um, work with our um, PIOs, our parking information officers, um, to be the eyes and ears on the streets during out of hours activities when we don't necessarily um, have staff on the streets. Um, so I'm happy to um, share with uh, members um, some of the work that we've already got in train. Okay, Councillor Martin. Yeah, just uh, very briefly, Lord Mayor, it is late. Um, uh, I just uh, thank Councillor Sims for his uh, motion. Um, there's no doubt about it, a couple of months on council and he's on to something that the previous term of council couldn't address, so I thank him for that. Um, as for the uh, surveillance, uh, I understand there are issues there, and indeed I've had conversations uh, with members of the administration about that, and I welcome any initiative that makes um, for a safer and better regulated Highway Street. Thank you. Members, Councillor Kouros, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd just like to make an amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Oh, no. <laughs> Seriously, what sort of attitude members, is that? Members. Uh, maybe listen to someone that knows what they're talking about. Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, sure. Um, I still support. Um, so, just to correct, sorry, I did send this before, but uh, I missed the parts that Councillor Sims brought in. So, notes that the paper's on the footpath along Highley Street from Morford. So, that noting part remains. A number of regulations relating to outdoor dining queries remains. Um, request the costing uh, to uh, costings.
to creating a position of the night time precinct officer to enforce council regulation on Honey Street remains to remove the repairing or replacing of pavers on Honey Street. And then add the following, which I've sent to administration. I'm happy to accept that as a variation. I don't want that. I want it as a amendment. Why? No, 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 that's just fine. That's a very interesting. Not interested. Not interested. These no. Are what are these? And you haven't given us these amendments at all. Yes, I have. I sent them over. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, keep that. Uh, the repairing of remove. Uh, so I'll just give the members a minute to read that and then... At the same time, more there, I have to accept that as a variation. I don't want that. It's significantly different than what's been proposed. If the mover of the... Um, he has to accept it. Um, the governance just told me he doesn't, actually. So I'll just double check with governance, just a moment. He's got the motion. Very happy to incorporate it. So this has been put forward as an amendment as opposed to a variation to the mo motion. Is this correct? Correct. Uh, I'll look for a seconder. So Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The reason, if I may speak to this. You may. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The reason I don't accept this as a variation, the intention that was moved before where Councillor Sims has spoken about this and seconded by Councillor Martin was talking about fixing pavers. I'm talking about a significant change uh, that isn't about fixing petty pavers. It's a lot more than that. There is a significant problem that we've got within our administration, and this motion puts the council administration on notice to deliver on endorsed four positions of this council where Councillor Martin was asleep, where we moved those positions and endorsed by this council, where we moved those positions and endorsed by council. Uh, the first time we've done that was in 2013, where we had a clear instruction to council to opportunities to advocate, influence and facilitate optimum retail, public from upright consideration, how the precinct complements and interconnects with other precinct, governance and precinct model management. The administration has taken that function and from the 3rd of May 2013 to the 18th of the 3rd 2014, the administration decided to close this item. And then the motion was brought in again on the 3rd of November 2015, asking for the same thing, which the administration then on the 12th of July 2017 decided to close the motion. And then it was brought again, and then it was closed again. Then it was brought again on the 26th of July 2016, and again by the 12th of the 7th 2017, the administration decided to close the motion again. These are four endorsed clear positions of this council and I am asking the administration to comply. I am putting the administration on notice in this item. This must be delivered. It was part of a bigger vision to connect the east all the way through to the west. We have works done on Rundle Street, Rundle Mall. We have had City West done in collaboration with the federal government, state government and the university. This is the only patch that's been left off and we need to address this issue. Going towards the master planning process and delivering outcomes to the area will assist in safety, will assist in expanding hopefully the public realm, will allow for better queue management, for better outdoor dining opportunities, and potentially we may need to consider having a discussion about one-way streets because the previous government was a champion and were very involved with the council around the delivery of that. And with the newly elected government, I'm hearing similarly now that they are interested in doing something on highly. So there is a great opportunity there for us to treat this with the utmost priority and to address it as previous council positions have endorsed and as this motion asked the administration to do once again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today and then Councillor Sims.
Did you oh, wish to... oh, thank you, Councillor Sims. <laughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm a bit, um, I must have been perplexed by this. Um, if Councillor uh, Abiad had sent me this before the meeting, I would have actually been very happy to um, incorporate this into the motion. Um, you know, the reason why I focused specifically on the papers, and I can assure you, Deputy Lord Mayor, through you, Lord Mayor, they're not petty to anybody who actually works on Henry Street. The reason why um, I focused specifically on the papers was because that had been raised with me specifically as something that could be actioned in a short uh, term time frame. Um, and um, I'm conscious of the fact that most ideas I put forward to this council are opposed, and I wanted to focus on something that was low hanging fruit um, without being uh, criticised or told that it couldn't be funded or would be the end of the world if I dared to express a, a contrary view. Um, so I'm a little surprised by this approach, and to be honest, if it was that great an idea, I would have thought that uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor would have put it forward last week when he outlined his vision for the City of Adelaide. Um, but I've put it forward because I wanted to have the discussion. I'm pleased to see that there's some improvements being made to the motion, um, and it would be nice if we could move away from this petty approach to politics. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I, I too am um, pretty annoyed about this. Um, it reminds me, uh, and I do feel a sense of deja vu, it's like the rape freeze when Councillor Moran said that I proposed this. Uh, Councillor Abia wanted to put his stamp on it and assist, insisted that he was the person who proposed that. I mean, look, it's petty. If this was so important, then in 2016, it would have been followed up. Councillor Abia would have been standing here in 2017 saying, where is it? 2018, he would have been saying, where is it? Where is it? 2019, he would have put something up. Instead, when Councillor Sims says, let's do something about this, he says, boy, what about me? That's all that's about. Moreover, I'm pretty uncomfortable with that last line that puts the administration on notice. Puts the administration on notice. That is a pretty bold and unpleasant thing to be saying to our staff. Uh, I, I, I urge you to consider withdrawing this. I, I think it's just objectionable. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If uh, Councillor Williams is uh, I'll keep it brief, Lord Mayor. Um, I commend the BLM for bringing this, uh, this amendment in. I think if we are doing some work uh, in, uh, in Hindley Street, let's do it once and let's do it right. So uh, I urge members to support this amendment. I'm going to ask the CEO uh, to comment. <coughs> Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to say, just to clear the air with this, I do recognise there's been an inadequate response over many years and over multiple councils on this matter. Um, and there have been significant changes that have impacted on Hindley Street over that time. So um, I think it is an opportune time, um, picking up councillors' views, that we do start to look at Hindley Street from a strategic perspective. And um, what we will do is arrange to actively work with council uh, in response to this motion and um, commit to coming back to you as soon as possible with some mechanisms to work forward. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Uh, if there are no further speakers, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, councillors. We'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That's uh, carried becomes a substantive. I'll go. It was any... any Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Canal, and Councillor Sims. Thank you. That now becomes the system. We go back to. Oh, is there any further discussion? We go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, we'll now go to the vote. Thank you, those in favour, those against. Uh, that is carried. Item 15.4, Councillor Moran. Uh, Lord Mayor, this meeting has taken on a pattern uh, that I feel this mo mo motion is too important. I don't want it amended by Hassam and I don't want it defeated, so I'll be deferring it to the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. That is withdrawn to the next meeting. Uh, we go to item 15.5, Councillor Martin. 
Um, Lord Mayor, look, I, I fear uh, that this uh, will be lost if it's put. Um, I'm going to defer it to the next meeting. Thank you, Councillor Martin. That is withdrawn and deferred to the next meeting. We go to item 15.6, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I'm going to put it forward. Uh, yes, I'd like to move the motion as printed and number four. Look for a second, look for a second uh, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> well, firstly, I look at the administ administration's comments and I find that a lot of work has been done. Thank you so much. I understand that like, we are in Australia and English is our official language and we should all speak in English. However, like for people like myself that who have tried to improve my English every single day over the last 18 years and I still have language barriers. So for those new migrants and international students and tourism are all have, having this kind of like difficulties. If the council could just provide some additional help to, to those who have some language barriers, I think this, this will make the city a much more popular place to live and visit. What I really try to achieve here is say like if on Monday in our customer center we have someone who can speak flu Mandarin or Chinese and, uh, and that the person is our staff and understand how things work in the council. Hence, people who have language barriers come over there on Monday, say Chinese come over there on Monday and they can get things done. Tuesday, maybe Vietnamese, the other bigger communities and, and then followed by the, the Greek, Italian and others. Hence, like, the council can really, on one hand, you know, like the council can get like the advertiser and uh, get maybe daily to tell, inform the public that we providing such service on such day. On the other hand, we could also contact the local Chinese community or, or local Chinese media, Vietnamese media, Korean media about what we are doing here. Hence, they can tell their own people, say, Chinese come over there on Monday. Uh, well, they say the Vietnamese who have language barriers come to the customer center on Tuesday. Such is that, I mean, something like this. Hence, we could really have more connections, build, build better connections with the local communities and make Adelaide a better place to visit and live. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde? Uh, yes, just quickly, um, I think this is an excellent motion and I think those ideas put forward by Councillor Ho are very good. Um, uh, having interpreter services provided by government so that it can interact with its citizens and others better is fairly non-controversial. Um, I do think uh, that uh, it is particularly incumbent on us to deal with our multicultural communities and stakeholders here in the city um, uh, in, a, in a very much more thorough way. And I think this is an excellent way of achieving that. Um, furthermore, as well, uh, it's also about livability, I think. So I'm very pleased to support this great idea. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I also wanted to commend Councillor Ho for putting this forward. Um, I think it is core business for Council to um, recognise that we need to make the city accessible for everybody um, and obviously part of that is ensuring that there's a diversity of languages as well. So I'm really pleased that Councillor Ho has put this forward. Um, I do also want to acknowledge the work of um, previous Councillor Corbell in this space because um, I know that this was a key priority for Priscilla as well um, and she did some work on this too. So uh, yes, I really look forward to seeing what we get back from administration. Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Kerra. Lord Mayor, um, I also commend this motion. I think it's a good idea. I'm just wondering whether it might be um, a good idea for the long term benefit of migrants to, uh, well, for me to put a variation in. Um, I'm under the second dot point, uh, right at the end of the second dot point after English, uh, replace the full stop with a comma um, and put in. Uh, with a view to fostering uh, the adoption and understanding of English. Um, uh, look, and I put this there because, uh, look, I, I'm, this is just on, on the spot, but I put this there because I think that uh, it is a, we, we are a city of migrants, we're going to continue to be so. Um, but I think that it, it, 
Oh, sorry. Do I need a second? Do I need a second? Yeah, that's you. Uh, oh, yes, thank you. Yes, you do. Sorry. Um, it's the men. We're a city of migrants. Um, I think that it is actually to migrants' benefit uh, that they ultimately are given opportunities to understand English. And I think that if we have that as, a, as an overarching element of this policy, uh, so council keeps in mind. Um, may I continue, Lord? Sorry, council. I was just getting some government's advice. Sure. Me. No, that's all right. Okay. Um, look, I, I just think I just think it, it'd be a good idea for council to keep in mind that ultimately migrants are best served uh, if they are uh, at, it, at at every opportunity. If we don't encourage, uh, you know, people being corralled into languages, we we can have the best intentions. But the ultimate long-term benefit would be to encourage people to uh, have the opportunity to learn English. This would be a great junction point for us to be able to foster the understanding of English. Um, now, pull this as a variation because I don't. I'm, I will ask Councillor Hope. He's happy to because so I'll, I'll put it as a variation. I, I'm not seeking to, you know, co-op the amendment or whatever. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm in your hands with that. Yeah, that's what I'm just. Getting. I'm just getting some government's advice this month. So, Councillor Ho, you're happy to accept yeah, that as variation? And then Councillor Moran, I just need you to withdraw your seconding because it's no longer an amendment, it's a variation. Is that okay, Councillor? Yeah, that's okay. Yes, great. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran, you were next, actually. Did you wish to speak to us? No? Members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, just a, a quick question. How would the administration encourage people who call us to adopt the English language? Is that a question to administration? It is. Yes. A CEO, would you like to answer that question? <laughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor. Claire, Claire will help us. Uh, Dunker. Uh, through, the, through the Lord Mayor, um, I'd probably, yeah, so. Um, I would need to take that on notice and um, we'll bring a report back or a workshop within a couple of months. Um, I understand the intent, um, but I think the important piece is the um, use of multi um, languages in our communication. So that's the area I'd focus on, but I understand the intent of Councillor Kira and I'd need to give that a, a little bit of thought. Well, Lord Mayor, look, I, I have two views. Uh, the first is, um, you know, it, it, it's extraordinary that uh, we're not prepared to accept that there's a climate emergency, but we're taking on the role of uh, encouraging people to speak English. Um, I wouldn't have thought that that's necessarily the role of local government. Um, uh, moreover, I think it's pretty impractical. However, having said that, you know, one of the tenets of this multicultural society, and I spent a long time working with culturally diverse groups through the Special Broadcasting Service in Australia. One of the things we acknowledge in this culture, in my view, about cultural diversity is that people are encouraged to retain their language. They're encouraged to retain the accoutrements of their culture. That's what makes this, this country so great. We have, we have people who speak different languages. We have speak people who bring to this culture diversity. Now, if we seek to make them all conform, it's at odds with what the tenets of cultural diversity are about. It's, you know, it's wacky. I, I can't accept that. It, it goes against every judgment, um, uh, every decision I ever made when I worked in the special broadcasting service. You know, it's all, it's all about, it's all about making people feel good about their cultural diversity, not making them conform to an Anglo-Saxon language. Exactly. <laughs> Councillor Kouros and then Councillor Moran. Well, as a daughter of immigrant parents whose first language was not English, um, I think something like this would have been very helpful for them arriving into the country. No, 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 making them speak English. Yeah, they would have enjoyed to be able to speak English and communicate effectively with other with the council and to be able to break that barrier with um, their, with, their, with their language, with communication. It doesn't take away 
um, who they are. It doesn't take away their culture, it doesn't take away their first language, it just allows them to communicate effectively with the council. So um, I think I support this motion um, and I don't want to go on about it too much. I mean, it's very clear. Um, we're not segregating communities. We're not telling people not to value the community. We're not telling people not to value their language. We're just asking for them to be able to communicate effectively. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Gores. Councillor Moran, before you run out. sort of small but interesting little thing that keeps us here in the chamber. That's a good addition. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Uh, I don't think it makes a big cultural shift or a slap in the face to non-English. I've seen it done in airports where they have the language underneath. Um, I, I think that it, it doesn't do any harm and I think we should hurry up, put it to the vote. So, councillors, if there are no other speakers, I will go back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Sum up. <laughs> Thank you, members. I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, no, don't call the division. Don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, <laughs> Councillor Carey. How we don't work together. <laughs> Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, and Councillor Knoll. Ah, uh, dear. Uh, members, uh, are there any motions without notice? No. Then we go to item 17, which is exclusion to the public for the report of the committee. Um, thank you, Councillor Moran. A second to Councillor Kerra. Uh, members, if I can ask you to vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? Uh, thank you. Members of the public that have a lot to do with this item. Ask for the doors to be opened. Put the lips out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that ends the meeting tonight. Thank you.